Jinx. Welcome to the Pat Brinka Podcast. I'm David Hollywood Hewlett, and I am here with two Los Angeles comedians with very different stories. We uh, encountered each other at 18 Bin. Shout out to Lex Las Vegas for Lex. making the introduction happen. The and we're going to find out what's going on in Los Angeles, what's going on in the military comedy, and what's going on in the world of dominatrix. We're right here with Mistress K. Hey. There How's she it going? Is. What's going on? And... Mr. Dick Salas. What's up, y'all? How you guys doing? That's right. And uh, his, his, your name sort of does sound like one of Mr. K's props, but it's... Uh, <laughs> I know, right? I should, should, should get a puppet. This me. is the Salas model. model. <laughs> it's a little rough around the edges and used a bit, but... <laughs> <I know. laughs> Talks a lot of shit. That's what Still it got some life in him. <laughs> if, you, if you really, if you guys are really friends, you should have, like, your own... <laughs> You know how porn stars make their own pocket pussy? You should be like, hey, buy the dick solace. I've got one. Oh, no. Here's the thing. We've already <laughs> discussed this in the car that um, $5,000 and you can suck his dick. Yeah, 5000 And I 5, get a 20% 000. finder's fee. Yeah. Um, if you're a man, if you're a lady, then it go- the money goes down significantly. $1,500? 1500 we're like. Based on how good you look. Wait. <laughs> So it costs. I'm pimping him out, people. How much, how much does it cost? Me out. How much does it cost to suck his dick? I, if you're a man, five thousand dollars. Five thousand yeah, dollars. Five thousand. Here's the thing with that. Is that I <laughs> he's feel, like, I've got it in the other room right now. I feel. <laughs> Like, yeah, we're check, making a buck we're making today. Money, we're making money. We're check under your out, check under out. your chairs, gentlemen, because we have. Uh, check the do I have a surprise for change? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's a lot easier to get your your dick sucked as a guy. Um, well, apparently it's all the rage in Vegas. Is, is, uh, really, is it? Is yeah, it? that's it's a new trend. You know, it came through like. Like Pokemon Go swept through for like a while. It was very popular. You know, uh, blowjobs are just the hot new thing here in Las Vegas. Where the very fuck are I We just is. found out about them. I thought it was hand jumps. I'm bring. I'm trying to bring back the hand jump. I could have swore that I've seen people snort like lines of cocaine off of you know cocks before out here. So, but they never just thought to put it in the mouth. Is that what? Well, that's the thing. Is like I, I think they probably like blowjobs are probably really popular back in like the '80s and '90s, and then like most recently, coke became really popular, and so now it's like you know the dick is covered with coke, and you don't oh, want to. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now you're peeing in people's asses. Apparently, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what I learned people, today. What, what is he peeing in people's asses? That was you were talking about that when you came that's in here. That's him. That's he. I, that's a military. Why and I'm the dominatrix, and he wants to pee in people's asses. That's, that's a military thing. Shit. That's what that is. That's a marine thing. I should say that's a marine thing. So anytime that like. You know, we'd be hanging out. You know, when we, you know, you're hanging out with your friends talking shit, and you're like, oh, you know, this celebrity's hot or so and so's hot or whatever. And one way, one, one way that you would say that you liked, in, you know, an individual, be like, oh, yeah, man, I'd definitely pee in her butt. You know, and it's just like, yeah, it's just a stupid dude thing stu- that yeah, we say. It was like, stupid. Yeah. Men are disgusting. Fuck yeah, we Y'all are. are fucking Fuck gross. We yes, are yeah. creative. Yeah, I hate you all. We have, we, have <laughs> very, <laughs> we have very simple needs, and so we just get more and more creative on how we express ourselves. Exactly. <laughs> Whatever. As long as the money's green, I don't care. Exactly. <laughs> That's why you love us. We got the money. Oh my god! Well, now I feel like I'm gonna get requests for that. They're like, will you be in my butt, mistress? I'm like, I don't have the equipment to do that, sir. Okay. I'm sure you could figure it out. Oh, I, I mean, I could get MacGyver on people and get really crafty with well, some. They stuff. do. They have like a a. It's like a cup. It's sort of like an oval shaped funnel. Yeah, it's a so shiwi. I have a shiwi two right? in my car. So you know? all you do, look, you get your shiwi, you connect a little <laughs> dick solace onto it, and boom, you got butt pee and <laughs> and we can just pee and going. Butt, you, you, you can monetize butt pee, <laughs> and we can finally leave this ridiculous blowjob thing there behind in the history yeah. where Man. where it belongs. You know, www.peeinyourbutt.com. That's what it should be right there. Or Love .org, because we're helping people. <laughs> wow. All proceeds go to yeah. people who have never had a... Um, Who've never weird. had their butts peed in. Oh, <laughs> virgins, I don't know. <laughs> uh, so, all right, where do we want to start? Because we have... You, you guys are both super different. <laughs> <laughs> Just we'll start with Mrs. K. We'll start with like, Mrs. K. All right, let's start with, let's start with Mrs. K. Yeah. Mrs. K, you are a... Uh, Comedian dominatrix or dominatrix comedian? Dominatrix, now comedian. Now and, comedian. Yes. How long have you been doing stage work? Oh, 
God, never ask a lady her age. I hate this question. Um, I didn't ask when you were born. I asked no, you know, how long you've been on comedy. It's the same thing for comedy. Um, it's been five years now. And yeah, yeah I uh, started out in California. And well, actually, I'll be honest with you. I started in people's living rooms while I was selling them sex toys. Right. So um, that's people were like, put the dildo down and pick up a microphone. I was like, it's basically the same thing. <laughs> so uh, I was just telling jokes to make people more, feel more comfortable about their sexuality and to sell more toys so I could make money and um, yeah and then I was like you know what fuck this I'm gonna go try comedy and so I you, lived on a couch for six months and I made it guys I made it so you, you were working uh, you were selling sex toys yeah what were you what company were you working for you don't want to say I don't want to say uh, I don't want to give her any clout her so okay so some lady was having you hot dildos yeah, and were, several were, you doing of us. Like, were you doing like that bachelorette party? Thing? I was doing all kinds of parties actually, and then I fell into um, doming. At, I was at a swingers party, and I was selling toys. And uh, this guy came over to me; he was really creepy, and uh, he kind of hit on me. And I put him down, and I was, told him he was like the scum of the earth, and no one would ever love him. And uh, this dom came and he over. Came. <laughs> well, this dom came over, and she told me she said, "Don't ever do that again." And I said, "What?" Right, and I think, oh shit, I'm, I've, I've offended a party guest. And she said, right. no, never put a man down for free because you can charge a good money for that. Wow. <laughs> she's like, it's a skill set. And she's like, I'll teach you the ways. And the next thing I know, I started trading uh, toys for lessons. Uh, Miss, shout out to Miss Violet back in uh, New Hampshire. Oh. And um, yeah, that's it's... how I got my start. And she hooked me up with a couple of regular clients. And then, you know, Someone told them I pee in butts, and then who knew I was, I was working full time. Yeah, <laughs> paying off my student loans. <laughs> so you have, you have student loans? Yeah, if they're college yeah. degrees. But hey, I'm peeing in people's butts now. You know, yeah. <laughs> telling making a lot of money now. A lot of, money. a lot of sex workers like to brag about their education. Isn't that interesting? It seems to happen a lot. <laughs> brag? It's oh, always, yes. well, always it's, bragging. It's the same. I was a professional mixed martial arts fighter, and the women who are high level in mixed martial arts, they're all like that too. Yeah, I got like three master's degrees and I get kicked in the head. Yeah. Like, that's my... It's, it's, it's like a... I, it's got to be a control thing, too, right? When a woman... It's a different psychology of women. Like, if you're a man and you're in combat sports, especially mixed martial arts, because you have to do, like, three combat sports at the same time. So you got to be a little extra nerdy, and then you also got to be a little crazy, because there's not like... It's not like boxing, where you... You do this, you do that. Like, boxing's been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. Like, people know how to do that. Wrestling, the rules are set. MMA, we're like, mm, maybe this will work. Still figuring we're it out. Just trying stuff yeah. out, you know? I mean, nowadays, it's a little more standardized. But, yeah. Uh, but, so, if, to be, to be like, gra- you know, to grasp for some control and that is a woman where... Oh, yes. Please mansplain to me how it's so difficult to be a woman. Yeah, Please well, tell I, me more, sir. It's 2020. I just Fuck. transitioned to be a woman over in the beginning of this podcast. <laughs> so I will tell you, Miss Lady, about my <laughs> vagina. Yeah, I want to hear about it. Paprika. I heard it's very spicy. <laughs> Bleed several times a day. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. My period blood is spicy. <laughs> 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 it's the tahine. It's not the paprika. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but well, I mean, but I'm the with the women that I've worked with in mixed martial arts. They have a real. They're always very. They're very cool. They have a real overachiever attitude. It's very dominatrixy, and I think probably a lot of them do that as well. You know, you know, there's guys who are like, I'll give you three hundred dollars if you choke me unconscious and punch me in the dick. You of know? course, one hundred percent. I mean, I think uh, what people don't realize is that men really, because they're in the top of the food chain here, really like to be put in their place. Which ladies is beneath us? Um, so <laughs> <laughs> oblige them from time to time. You know, right. like you gotta walk on a couple of guys to get you the real winner here. <laughs> Fucking do it. You know. Yeah. Hey, if it's there, you know, sometimes you have to, it's always just supply demand. I mean, with all, anything, anything that people are paying for and that there's a scene for, it's because there's a demand for it. And it doesn't matter how illegal weed is, we'll figure it out. If they make coffee illegal tomorrow, we just, we would get our coffee from a creepy guy from Columbia instead of, uh, you know. Well, well, people do things, people do things for a lot of different reasons. But what I've experienced in the lifestyle is that um, it, BDSM and the lifestyle and kink culture is just um, taking, creating a fantasy world and creating your own rules for it. And that's, I don't think people realize that, is that 
as a child, you, you're grown up and you're kind of told, you should play and create these fantasy worlds, right? And yeah. all this stuff. And then as we become adults and we get older, people are like, no, you have to go to work and you have to pay your bills and you have to do this. And, and you lose that sense of play. So, like, what I do is I just really play a lot with people in, in different ways with lots of you know, funner toys than what your child has here. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, th- there is there is like a betrayal when you become an adult because you grow up with Santa Claus and the Easter, and this mystical world, and the world is your oyster. You're like, oh wow, they, 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 all this potential, mm-hmm. and who knows? And then we sort of just get beaten down by life and experience and some our jobs, and we got to survive, and we got to do this. We have to do all these other things. And so much of that, and not so much now, I feel like there's a lot more value placed on having imagination and personality in the last few years than there was before. It used to be like you go to college, it was like the fight club thing, you know, you go to college, you get a job, I don't know, get married, whatever, you know, and now, and that was the, and that was the whole point, and that was a huge movie when I was in college, and so we were all just like, college is stupid, you know, Mm -hmm. and there's a betrayal when you become an adult where fairies are no longer real. Dragons are no longer real. The sexiest of the lizards mm-hmm. uh, in the lizard oh, family, yeah, as we all course, know. Of course, of course. And then someone like you comes along in adult life and you're like, you're guess like, no, what? they still exist. Yeah. Come with me. Come down the rabbit hole. <laughs> Come meet a leprechaun. Here's wait, some... wait. You have to pay the Venmo first. You know? That's right. <laughs> you must pay the toll. Always get the money up front. <laughs> so you, so you, like a lot of dominatrixes, got into it because you were doing something else and you sort of bumped into someone who was good at it. And I assume you have a mentor, right? Someone yeah. who trains you, a sensei. Yeah, but I mean, it, again... There's so much. There's so much that people are into. There's so many different kinks out there that I, you, not one person knows everything, right? I run into people in the scene recently, and they're like, "Do you know about this?" And I'm like, "I've never heard of it." Like I ha- I'm like googling it. Google didn't like, know. Like peeing in butts or something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like peeing in butts. That's yeah. a new re- revelation of today. Hashtag peeing in butts. <laughs> <laughs> Dot org. <laughs> We're sponsored by them today. Yeah, yeah. Um, but and yeah. Liquid death. <laughs> yeah. Shit. So yeah, so there's always new stuff popping up and every there'll be somebody that's into a kink more so they can, you know, give you more of their educational perspective on it and what they like. But it's really like there's lots of rules and consent is sexy, you know, right. and boundaries and well, you got to tether yourself to the space. spaceship when you go floating around in Rick and Morty world, right? I mean, so that's essentially yes. the safe word and the parameters. So you've got to set the parameters of your own mm-hmm. uh, fantasy world, and 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 that's the thing. Like now, you can do whatever you want once you've outlined the you know your Minecraft sex world that you're going to be hanging 100%. out. One hundred percent. What is the what is the basic? Like, is there a so I, I come to you, I say, hey, I've, I've got this kink, uh, I want to hire you as a dominatrix. Mm-hmm. What do you say to the customer? Uh, what, there's got to be like an interview where you get to know them and figure out where, where this is going. Yeah, it's a conversation, really. Yeah. It's uh, what it's are you podcast. looking? <laughs> 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 yes, it is. Um, it's just basically a conversation between two people. <clears throat> you know, like what are you trying to experience? What are you trying to get from this? Is it... Is it therapy? Is it a release for you? Is it something that you've never done before? Is it something that you've experienced before? Like, again, it, it just really is like, what do you want? And what do you want from me? Give me a little, give me like an example, because I, I, I need to put this to, you know, I think, color this picture a little bit. I think he's trying to, I don't know, I'm getting the feeling that you're kind of interested in some of her services, bro. I'm just saying. <laughs> I, 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 I'm asking questions. I want to I wanna know <laughs> what's this all about. Yeah, what do you, I, I, I can't, I cannot imagine what I would hire a dominatrix for, but maybe if we go through the interview process, I can see some products on the shelves well, that hey, I want to pick up and put in the basket. I love it. It's yeah. not like I have a catalog here. Like, I'm like, uh, number A what is on your the menu, menu, please. Do you have a barcode I can scan on my phone? <laughs> yes, it's look at it in private? located like, between my ass cheeks. B and one of C. Okay, one of C. I know. No, it gave me, like, like. Can I have that without mayonnaise? <laughs> <laughs> extra mustard, extra mustard. Mustard. Uh, well, like, okay, just give me an example of like one of the conversations. Like, give me an example of one. I'll of give you an clients. example of a you, client that I had. There we go. Um, okay, so client wanted to. Uh, his kink was to get tickled. 
right? So it was, where would you like me to tickle you? And what areas can I tickle and what can I not tickle? And how would you like to be tickled? Like, And then it's like, is this good? Or is like this good? <laughs> or like, do you want more nail? No nail? Like, you know, like, is it, you want kinky tickle? Or like, do you want my body on you? Like, so it was that thing. And then... Um, he was a very hairy man. Like, we're talking front and back sweater, right? And he was short, Armenian dude, like little meatball, looked like a hairy falafel. And I was just, like, clawing it like a cat. What One of those catnip, uh, like, you know, they have the catnip towers. Like he was a towers, couch, like a scratching And I was just, post. like, scratching it, like, going to town. And he was like, hee, right? And, like, <laughs> as... <laughs> As a dominatrix, I was getting pissed off because this man was enjoying himself, right? And that's not usually... I don't usually hear he, he, he. I usually hear like, oh, no, not again. You know, or like, <laughs> curse, you know, it's like, oh. Fuck you, mom. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Or, yes, mother, I'll have another. You know, like, usually hear like some kind of version of that. But like, yes, she'll never love me or I'll never be loved, like, or whatever, or, you know. You know, I probably shouldn't have had cheese today. I don't know. Like, I've heard weird things. But this guy was just like, hee hee laughing. So like the dom side of my brain was like, oh, I fucking hate this guy. He's really enjoying himself. But like the comedian side of me was like, oh, he likes me. He's laughing. Look, he's laughing. I was very conflicted. I was very conflicted. Uh, so it's, it's now it's become somewhat hard to separate those worlds. And what I've noticed is that now that I've done some scenes, like I have an adult um, baby that I play with in Pasadena. He has uh, his own little... Um, nursery in his house and he has like a makeshift changing station. And this is a grown man yes. who likes to act like a baby yes, and in his, Pasadena. Oh uh-huh. I'm God. his mother. I come over. I give him a bottle. Um, yeah, I Did burp him. Burp him? <laughs> yes. Burp him? Yes. And he has like this rocking chair where I rock him and I burp him. Do you wipe his ass? In there? Of course. And this man <laughs> he loves God. Chipotle and you have not lived oh. till you clean the man's Chipotle oh. shit out of a fucking adult diaper. And I mean, he's an older gentleman, so I'm like, diaper's not really a kink if it's a necessity at this point in life, you know? But uh, he's a cool guy, but again, has severely, like, deep-rooted issues of just not being cared for as a child. And uh, again, it's a way to kind of relive these things. And it's funny because now I've gotten on, like, the honest websites mailing list so i get coupons for diaper rash cream and i'm learning all these parenting oh, tips wow. and i'm not a mom and i don't want to be but i'm turning out to be a pretty good parent in the process guys wow <laughs> it, it's that's a new one for me well there's it is like like there's a lot of emotional release right like 100 percent. people end up crying how often what percentage of your sessions end up with the guy crying um a lot but it's kind of my specialty humiliation is my thing it's my jam that and pegging you know I like to peg a guy (laughs) as a woman it's very empowering to put on a strap on and just say all the fucked up things that's ever been told to me as a woman and just infuse it into my client's ass because pegging (laughs) isn't just about the it's a power dynamic it's a total shift a little bit yeah but a little well that because that's that's one of the just anatomically that is that's a that's the physical men are like bigger stronger and then we have the the we have the the plug and you guys got the socket and that's just since the dog yes. time since the caves however and, though uh, the male g-spot is actually near your prostate gland right so again you know it's not gay if you like it so, yeah well i'm know? not saying i'm not saying it doesn't it is. i'm just <laughs> saying i'm saying that anatomically the power dynamic is we go into y'all yeah yeah and to to flip that around especially for someone who's got whatever it is like i hear you hear a lot about like the the wolf of wall street like corporate badass type dude who just wants to be absolutely made the forced to be the opposite by someone they pay lots of money to and that seems to be like yeah i've spent on men and they've gotten super hard they're like oh my god disrespected by this chick you know like this would never happen in the real world because they're men of power you know and here i come and i'm like fuck your power like here in my world now bitch and um I've had a lot of men cry as a release for whatever reason, and we call it in the lifestyle um, uh, aftercare. And aftercare can be different for everybody, whether it's like you want to be left alone or you need a hug, you need like a tissue, 
you know, um, sometimes people need a shower and just kind of a release or a drink, like, you know, or maybe some blow. I don't know. Like, a lot of people like a lot of different things after a scene is done. Yeah. And then um, I kind of... My thing is I always want to repeat customer, right? I That's don't go cool. out That's on a lot of that dates, is people. customer service at his foundation, repeat customers. <laughs> yes, but I do have a lot of repeat customers. Nobody wants to date me, but everybody wants to see me on the down low. <laughs> I feel like nobody just tries out a dominatrix. Like, there's not like a free trial where it's uh, like, yeah, check it out. See, see what you think. Uh, you know, I'm going to stomp on your nuts. Or yeah, whatever. well, it's, I mean, it's really hard, like, that conversation. What do you do for a living? Like, when I say I'm a comic, immediately guys are like, never, nope. Never, you know, like yeah. I don't even have to tell people well, I'm a dom. I just say I'm a comic, and then like they run away. Yeah, well, because it's a secret, and the whole thing, like I'd be, I'd be worried to to date a comedian because you know that she's gonna talk about you on stage. One hundred and ten percent. I mean, that's what we do, oh, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah so we talk. So and that that is really in direct conflict with the whole idea of like I'm gonna go do some some super unusual me stuff with this this person who specializes in helping me live out these whatever the release is and nobody can know well that's the cool thing about my business right is that uh just like people that go to like a massage therapist or masseuse you've never met this person you're letting them touch your naked body it's the same thing with me only i'm like what are you into? What does your What does your partner want, not want to do for you that I will charge you money because I will never tell anyone? Where's the cramp? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, Steve, is that you? Because well, because a lot of people are probably married. You know, they they probably feel trapped in relationships that they don't they they they're not getting what with the relate. That's a really weird thing where people are in a relationship that's incredibly functional in their life but they're not that happy in it but their life would essentially cease to function the way it would if yeah well they, i they so get done. i have a couple back home they are the nicest secrecy is the point you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to, yeah well i have a couple back home um the guy's kink is he's a foot fetish guy right he likes legs pantyhose like feet and he likes to suck and play with them touch them all that stuff he likes yeah. to smell shoes and buy women shoes and see them walk around in those shoes and his wife is like you know what like <laughs> he's over her feet you know he's like seen it been it done it you know wants new feet around yeah and they're the nicest people <laughs> yeah wow. and he's bought me like really expensive like red bottom shoes you know that i've walked around to their apartment as i'm talking to his wife and we're just kiki and having a good old time and he's just like getting really excited of me walking around in these shoes and then he's massaging my legs and all this stuff and I'm literally sitting there talking to his wife and she's just like couldn't be bothered by it and they're the nicest couple and she was like if this is what he wants if this is what makes him happy and she's like I'm just gonna give it to him honey is your tooth still hurting I'm sending you to the dentist (laughs) yeah they have foot fetish parties they're really a lot of fun Um, if you've ever been it's kind of like a strip club but instead of seeing people's whole body you really just see like the ankle down you know like you really just see like the leg down and like people come out and they walk how victorian and you're like yeah. at level foot level and you're just like looking yeah. at the shoes and guys are like under the table they're like oh yeah those yeah. those wow. feet look at those pedicures yeah. and it's like the people that really like feet are always the ones that are like they're like the weird toe that hangs off the hoof like oh, those yeah. really get them going like the jones like i have pretty oh. feet and every guy's like you have really pretty feet and i was like thanks and they're like you know, they just want to put them in their mouth, and I like it. I'm just, uh, whatever, go for it. I, hey. It's got to be like you see a, a woman with nice feet, and then one of her toes is weird, and it's like nobody will love your weird toe like oh, I would. Oh, no. Those women, are, those women are cranking in the dough during Foot Fetish Finder. No wow. Seriously, yes. There's foot, so there's the Foot Fetish parties where it's just about, I, I heard that that, a, a lot of these fetishes get started, and as I understand the definition of uh, taboo or fetish is essentially your t- what turns you on is taboo. I was talking to you last mm-hmm. night about Jaya Ma. Mm-hmm. And Jaya, Jaya Ma is a sex expert. I heard her on uh, Christopher, I think it's Christopher Ryan, the guy who wrote Sex, sex at Dawn, if you know about that book. But, yeah. Um, so he had him. He had her on his podcast, and she broke down his. And they're like essentially the Tony Robbins of sex. And she has this thing called the Erotic Blueprint, where they break down your sexualities into like four or five categories. There is um, taboo, which means what turns you on is uh, taboo. Right? Mm-hmm. It's uh, or kink. Kink is what turns you on is taboo.
fantasy <laughs> obviously I'm a babysitter <laughs> and uh, Dick Salas besides your name what is your fetish fetish oh uh, <laughs> man I don't know if I have you guys fetish. drove here from LA surely you talked about something Oh, we talk about dumb shit all the time. Yeah. yeah. How do you get? I don't want to know what Dick's fetish is. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be weird if it wasn't fetish. involving his dick? <laughs> well, it's clearly peeing in asses. That's, <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> probably my fetish. No. Uh, no. What is my fetish? I don't know, that's a good one. Now. No, I gotta think. What? You, well, how would you come up with this based on the Jaya Ma, uh framework? How would you clarify your well, like? What turns you on? Like, is it stuff that because taboo could be like if you were raised super conservative and like doggy style was just a way you oh, don't no, have no, sex. Like no. doggy style could be your taboo what, if you that's where you come from. I do have a question about that. What is that base? Is is, is that like based on like some type of psychological component? Yeah, or, it's, is, I, is, I, is, is I think she a psychologist or what? I, well, she, I don't. You would have to just look J, J- I Y A M A, and okay. she's. Like, again, like how Tony Robbins has a whole system for, like, running your life. Like, she has a whole thing for understanding your own sexuality. And, That's interesting. And they have they, – they put out – her – by they, it's, like, her production team. It's, like, her. She has two husbands. One of them wanted to be a father. The other one wasn't so into it, but they're all in love. So – uh, it's just a very so they're polyamorous. Yeah, I guess is that the yeah. Cl- yeah. classification? Yeah, and they just and so she has, they have instructional like sex videos and stuff like that. But it, but also like looking at it, it's not a, it's 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 very informative. But the way you, it's not like anatomy class. You know, it's a yeah. They're they're fun videos to watch, but they're not yeah. uh, design. It's not like porn. You know, mm-hmm. like, oh, that's a good idea. You know, you're like, oh, that's, oh, that's, what, they'll, they'll, they'll do, do like, they, David's over there taking notes. Start He's here. Like, oh, oh yeah, I took notes. I, I totally, uh. He's like, you put the lotion on first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't touch, don't touch my fucking dog. <laughs> oh, now I gotta put the glass away. <laughs> but, I, uh, but, I took the I took the test a couple of times and it was either like taboo or did you pass? Uh, yeah, no, yeah, <laughs> sixty nine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it was like shapeshifter, which makes sense for me because when for me it's like if the other person's not having a good time, you then seem it, like a people pleaser. It takes me out of it. It takes me totally out of it. You know, it's not like I'm going to do this to this record. Like it just, it's more like I need to I need to get to know somebody mm-hmm. to really enjoy it. You know, and then mm-hmm. everybody's having a good time. But other people like they like it's like look, I I really need to uh, I need a woman with some nice feet. Some people are real <laughs> feet is a thing I've been seeing on Pornhub and stuff popping up a lot more. And yeah, I, I'm not into it. I'm not into feet. Like, no, it's just I'm not, not either. Feet disgust me to be honest. Yeah, you've done a lot of hiking so and stuff, so it's like feet, feet are like the last feet. thing. Feet is the nastiest thing. Dude. When she's talking about all these feet, he I'm loves titties. That's all he talks about all the titties. time. Ass and titties are my chief everything. I'm an ass man. I'm a titty man. Those are my things. If I, if I have a fetish, it's those things. That's what I gotta say. Ass and titties. I That's feel like those are pr- those are preferences, love. <laughs> no, those are those are fetishes. How much I love them? Yes. No, I'm I'm a big fan of both. Big, huge fan. So yes, I'm an advocate. He's, for well, he's into dragons. That's what it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I even got him on me. Dragons have four feet. <laughs> <laughs> they also have poor skin. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, you don't know. You ever met a dragon? You never know what they got. They might have extra. Who knows? 
I had a client that would come over. They might come fire. You can't be sure. Yeah, I was telling this story yesterday, which I hadn't thought about him in a while, but I used to have this client. He'd come over and he'd hide gifts for me in his foreskin. And oh, <laughs> like as an offering. <laughs> as an offering. Yeah. Yeah, he was like, does it please you, mistress? <laughs> I was like, it's all right. What do you put, like a little, like a race car or something? Uh, so I, I love gummy bears. And it was like, one time it was a gummy bear. The other time it was like a ring. Um, yeah, it was like a lot of different things. Dashing and daring, courageous and caring. Yeah. I was like, could you fit a whole dollar coin in there? <laughs> like, wow. I'm going to see how much it stretches. Jesus Christ. <laughs> And he's like, I can't wait. Maybe, like, what does he walk around all day? Just like, I can't wait till Mr. Skagis goes. Well, I would have certain people that I would let them out of their cages. So they would have conch cages and stuff like that. I also had a client that was into sounding, which is like sticking things down uh, the man's urethra. And he liked to get like a UTI every week. So I'd give him a UTI, and when he would piss, it would burn. And he'd send me a text and be like, I'm thinking of you, mistress. Oh, wow. That's, see. I, Look, I know. I mean, if that's a mental doesn't, health issue, I, that's not a fucking fit. I, Listen, I, guys. I don't want to judge. No, fuck that. I'm judging. <laughs> I'm calling it out. That's some. Ugh. So, ladies, you have to ask yourself: Would he burn for you? Does he burn for you? Because uh, he burned for me, and I loved it. <laughs> I, I am, Hurt in the van. <laughs> I am never. I am never. Uh, su- I, I'm. I guess I'm. All, I'm just constantly surprised at how. Creepy men can be sexually like not. Cre- I mean, to oh, me, it sounds, right. it sounds oh, creepy. People are masochists. One hundred percent. Let's put a let's put a stopper. Right There's not just men that are into some freaky shit. Oh, women are right. too. Women. This is-, this is the same. These are the same gender that when they're first discovering themselves, fuck themselves with almost anything in the house. Yeah. I've heard stories of women fucking giant teddy bears. As using like the first time they popped their cherry, the first time they hump something was a fuck their giant table that their dad won them at fucking like a carnivore or something. Their hairbrush, toothbrushes, the fucking shower. Well, toothbrushes vibrate hair. now, so I'm yeah, not. Yeah, you know what I'm not supposed to that. Fucking <laughs> like one girl told me she used a what was it? Uh, she turned her hairbrush around and she used a handle. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like weird. Like, I'm like, okay, cucumbers. In fucking a pinch. zucchini. You know what I mean? Carrots. You know, it's like, what the fuck? Like, seriously, dude, people people in general are into some weird fucking shit. Well, as a vegetarian, I'm against the, the vegetable I mutilation. Just, I think as a vegetarian, you should be for that because it gives it extra flavor, you know? And that's where you get your protein from. No, so. I've never looked at a cucumber and go, hmm, nice to meet you. What's your name? Like, did never. You, what, what was, did you have like a weird sexual awakening or anything? Or did it was it just something that you kind of fell into being involved in this? Um, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. you hear about the guys who are into feet, for example, and the, apparently they were imprinted sexually when they were at that pivotal age, and for whatever reason they had whatever going on emotionally, and they're under, you know, under the table, seeing their mom walk around in high heel shoes or something like that, and for whatever reason that those wires connected, mm-hmm. and that's been back there for however many years till they meet you. No, I think I just come from a very long line of ball busters. And um, I saw my mom beat my dad up when I was younger and then go to church and be like, he hit me. You know, like, I was like, I like that. Like, manipulative bitch. I was like, I've got to use that later on in life. And, um, yeah, my father wanted boys and he got two girls. So we basically grew up as alphas. My dad was like, you don't need a man to do nothing. I'm going to teach you how to do everything. So it's really hard for me to date men because I'm like, I don't need you. Yeah. And now with vibrators, do I? I don't, no, I don't need you. Sorry. I mean, yes, it doesn't cuddle you, but apparently I could just get a teddy bear, right? There you, <laughs> I don't go. Know. There you go. Get a teddy bear. Start <laughs> or that boyfriend pillow that they have. <laughs> you can get what, with, like, the, the, with the arm. He's got the arm. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs a nook? I'll just buy it on Amazon. <laughs> And you got the toys. You can just put a strap on it that vibrates or something. Oh, my yeah. God. I feel like the sex dolls are way more popular with men than women. Dude, it, sex dolls. Okay. Have well, you guys no, seen the, the story sex... of the AI sex dolls that they're what coming is that? out with? So I watched a documentary about it. And the, the sex dolls for women are actually cool because... Um, they they just give you persistent compliments, ladies. They're like, you're beautiful and I love you. <laughs> like, I'd listen to you for hours. 
you know it's like it's just it's a I thing i can't believe she would post that yeah and then they you <laughs> can pop off bitch. different different penises you know like you can pop off one that vibrates you can pop off one that looks realistic one that's just kind of like you know hanging loose and natural <laughs> Wow. I've seen, I saw a documentary of this lady who had it for like 24 hours and she's like, it's changed my life. Wow. <laughs> I was like, if you can afford it, I mean, they're like 15 grand. I always, whenever I hear about that though, I'm always like, what does this woman look like? Like, I, need I mean, to, this I, lady was a smoke show and she was like, 10 out of 10 would recommend get one now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so maybe if she's a smoke show, she's, she, I always want to think about why the, why most people don't have one of those. So, like, why does she get one? You know, why is there a market for it? You know, who, well, what is the I idea? mean, you got to think about this, okay? Like, statistically speaking, just looking at everything, all right? People are into just <clears throat> fucking... There's, there's, there's a niche for everything, a market for everything. But in the world today, women outnumber men. In the U.S. alone. In the yeah. U.S. alone, for really? every one man, there's seven women. Mm-hmm. It's one to seven. One that, to that's seven. the that's the and growing and, and growing. growing. Wow! Come on, growing. ladies, let's and it's reproduce more, more and more. Huh? So, if you think about it, why wouldn't she not be into that? You know, it's like it's it's a build your man. You know what I mean? Like, think about it. There's not enough of us to go around at this point. Well, scarcity equals value. So, if yeah. there's plenty of dudes to pick from, then if you're like not. one of the you, if you're whoever it is, if, you, if you're a 10, then you can just pick whatever you're feeling like. I God, guess. this sounds like a ploy. Hurry up, ladies. Get your losers now before they're dead. Yeah, the supplies are running out. We get a free sample. Men that going on sale. There's a lot of, we have a lot of free trials like Sam's Club, but to actually purchase, that's a whole different story. <laughs> it's like well, a punch card. You know, I have been seeing a lot of stuff come across my social media. It might just be... You know, it's like my algorithm or whatever. But there's, um, who is that guy? He's that, um, the dude with the goatee, and he's always telling women, like, you ain't shit. Like, but it's like a, um, but it's like, it's like where women would be like, I'm a 10. I deserve a guy who's making this much money and whatever. And meanwhile, she's not a 10, and she doesn't really bring anything to the table, and he lays that out, like, from that perspective, which is interesting, that statistic you just mentioned, Mm -hmm. because if there is more men, than uh, women. No, there's it, more women than men. More, if there's the more women than men, uh-huh. then that would mean that men's standards can kind of go up. Because before it was just like somebody who would put up with you for any Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Mm. Men have standards? Mm. Get out of town. We, <laughs> we, have, we have standards in the long term. Well, we have, it, it, no, you it depends don't. on the you stick your dick literally into a seat cushion and expect change in return. Like, you guys have no man. expectations. Expect change. I, well, <laughs> just like it depends on the woman. It depends on the man, you know, because yeah. let's be honest, how many people have we met that are, you know, not worth the air they breathe, you know what I mean? Like, they just can't, they don't know basic understanding. They can't even look both ways and cross the street, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Clearly, the color lines, been you know hurt by a lady. <laughs> no, I'm talking about people in general. You know? well, I've been hurt by many of people, not just ladies. <laughs> but no, it's just one of those things where I think to myself, like, at the end of the day, I, um, people are weird. We're in a weird fucking shit, you know what I mean? And, yeah. And there's no such thing as, I think, like, the pick of the litter sort of thing. Like, no one's going to, like, I, I think we're all trying to get it right. But the fact that women outnumbers, I understand why there's all these, like, sex boxes. I mean, and that these... matters, though, that there's more women than men. Because I used to hear stories about Brazil where there's way, I think in, like, uh, Sao Paulo, like, in, in Rio, there's way more. Yeah. And they all look like, like, Penelope Cruz. You yeah. know, there's these amazing-looking women. And there's not that many men. And the guys that I would talk to from Brazil, they'd be like, yeah, we would just have bets seeing like how many girls we could make out with yep. that night or what. Or you could just be standing around and these amazing looking women would hit on you, just you being there, mm-hmm. which is not really how it goes in the United States, you know. But with the the ratio changing, it's got to adjust the uh, the dynamic of how well, people well, meet. Yeah, but then you have women that want to be men and then you have women that uh, like other women. So I don't think that it's... Like, there's seven women for every one guy in that sense. I think women are attracted to other women. And Whoa. I also think that a lot of women are like, men, I'm good. Like, I'm just not doing it. Um, I'm kind of off men these days just because y'all are god-awful creatures. Again, I hang out with comedians. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are not a good base. That's what I like about the comedy scene is it doesn't matter if you're, like, <laughs> man, woman, trans. Like, it doesn't matter who, what, are you, you go on stage, you're trying to get good at doing the thing. Yeah. 
and that's it. We're all in the same club. It's oh, like yeah, it's like a jujitsu gym. Balls. It's like yo, you put on a belt, you yeah. showed up. Let's fucking practice. You know, yeah. let's learn. And yeah. you know, this is my that's my friend for training. It's like probably like the military same thing. Like you break yeah. some, you break some. You everyone gets broken down to like the jarhead level, right? Yeah. Is that an accurate term? Well, I just as, watch movies, but as far as like I can't speak for the other branches. I can only speak for the Marine Corps. But Marine's pretty hardcore, though, right? I mean, people we're are always talk hardcore of all of, of all of them. We are. Yeah, we're we, we're the most traditional. We're the most hardcore. We're the most, uh, um, I guess, enthralled within our own culture. We created our own culture. Does that yeah. mean you guys pee in the most butts? Or yeah, we do. Like, <laughs> we, do we, we do the most of everything. We pee the most butts. Uh, we shoot the most. We fight the most. We fuck the most. The whole thing. You know, drink yeah, drink the most. We were literally the only branch born in a bar. So you know what I'm saying? Like that's that's pretty fucking American yeah. right there. Literally, <laughs> the old, our the bartender was our first recruiter. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, Captain Samuel Nicholas. Hmm. Yep. You want to enlist? No. You want a shot? Yeah. How about there now? Go. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Like, next thing you know, you're 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 on a ship fighting the Pain British. Pain and butts. You know? Pain and butts. <laughs> next thing you know, you're back damn scrolling. Yep. You're peeing British butts back then, and then it just <laughs> continued on. Now we pee in all butts. Yeah, you so so uh, Dick, you have, uh, um, you're a musician. I know, right? We just talked about pain, and I said Dick, yeah. and then it's like I couldn't think of anything clever, so I just <laughs> said Dick. Uh, you were a musician at the Whiskey at Go Go. You're you're the singer for the house band. Oh yeah, one of the. And tell me about your because I come from a music background. I started oh. off. I came from Mississippi, and I first wanted to be a rock star. Then I realized wrangling like four other guys was a real pain in the ass. Yeah. And then I became a mixed martial artist because that's sort of the same type of free creative endeavor, but yeah. it, it's just you. And I was whatever. I had the right psychology to, to do that. Yeah. And then after I did that for a couple of the, about 17 years or something, then I got really into comedy, which is very much the mixed martial arts of public speaking. That's what I think stand up is. Agreed. And I feel like also like dominatrix is sort of like the mixed martial arts of like, I don't know, of, of sex stuff. It's, it seems like because the idea is that you have this spectrum of several disciplines that you can take tools from in order to accomplish the one goal. Mm-hmm. Right. And when you were talking about how, it's wide open. It's just sort of like, all right, we're going to set the boundaries for the game. Yeah. And there's new stuff all the day, all the time people are coming up with. Mm-hmm. I think as technology uh, increases, I mean, like the VR world is now a huge thing uh, where I know doms that are doming in, in VR spaces yeah. where they've literally virtual reality created their own dungeon or world or whatever it is. And through just, you know, yeah. Through that space, they've created places where people come in and then can watch those scenes. So you'd have like avatars in the back that are just like <laughs> watching <laughs> as that one person who's obviously paid or whatever they've played with before is uh, reenacting that scene. So I think it's it's really interesting how people are evolving and 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 again, I think the world is ending. It's I mean, it seems like everything in the world is just going to shit now. There's an argument there. So I feel like, you know, just people need to get outside their box in a way. Just stop, you know, like stop saying, oh, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do it. Just do it because we don't know if tomorrow is going to be here, right? <laughs> like we really don't. Yeah. That... <laughs> I, I like yes, like spit on my spit on my face and then unfriend me. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's what would really make me come. <laughs> yes, <with. laughs> exactly. Slide uh, into my DMs. And like, what do you think my dick looks like? I'm like fifty dollars, and I'll give you my critique. <laughs> like, what? Well, I just do it already. I don't know. Yep. Uh, Dick, tell me about rock and roll. Uh, let's see, rock and roll. I just got started in music early on. Um, I think what helped me, like you, uh, I came from a martial arts background, so I studied martial arts growing up. Uh, what did you? What were you looking at? Was uh, it Kung Fu? Uh, Kung Fu Sun Tzu was the first one. Boxing. See, like Chinese boxing? Uh, like with a kickboxing with takedowns? No, so Kung Fu Sun Tzu is like the dirty form of Kung Fu. It's like the dirtiest form. Like we eye gouge, we kick in the balls, we fucking break limbs, all that stuff. It's right. like literally dirty Kung Fu. Um, and then uh, I did uh, some judo, uh, some jujitsu, uh, boxing, I already said. And then uh, a lot of street fighting because I grew up in East LA. And from that, it I don't know, music just always spoke to me. It really yeah. always did. And what, then, what band was your first band where you were like, fuck, I got to get into that? So origi- originally, I started off uh, 
in a Christian rock group that yeah. never went anywhere. <clears throat> but we, we, we Christian yeah. rock group? Christian uh, this, rock. I'm learning everything. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was the first band I ever did of a uh, Christian rock group. But we did like three gigs. At, 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 Jesus at, like, loves church. us. <laughs> but, <laughs> kind of something like that, yeah. But originally I was supposed to be a rapper in the group, and then they had me be the singer. <laughs> yeah. Those two other rappers. You know what this Christian rock band needs? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. We need we need some paprika. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it needs paprika. <laughs> when you say paprika, though, like my my <laughs> neuro, know. Like, my, you know it means my my neuro linguistic programming is shut the fuck up. Hilarious. All right, I'm just oh, kidding. Like, no, but uh, from there, I, it, that was the first band I did. But there wasn't like I said, nothing happened from there. Um, it was up till about a couple of years. Jesus was against it. Yeah, no, Jesus was very much against me joining the the church. Dancing uh, leads to sex. It, uh, it did, and then a lot of it. And then, <laughs> no, the and dragon then, was like, "Come over to the dark side." I, and, and I listened, you know. Uh, no, and then from there, uh, I just started. I kept doing music here and there, and then uh, I met some friends of mine that lived uh, in the same area. I did. Well, stop it! You don't have friends. Yeah. Aww. Back then I did. Back then, not yeah. now. Not now. But uh, I met See, some. That's friends. a free sample I was talking about. That's a Sam's Club dominatrix. There you go. You got to send her a dollar for more. <laughs> free yeah. sample, guys. Bling. <laughs> We're gonna hear a Venmo just start going off right now. <laughs> Ooh, I might get turned on. Watch out, guys. <laughs> there's there's eighty thousand guys just jacking to this podcast right, right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. No, and then um, one of my buddies gave me. One of my, uh, who's now one of my former, uh, who's now uh, one of my buddies gave me the number to a guy who was looking for a new vocalist for their band. They happened to live up the street from me. I joined that band, and then that band was named Mind Delay, and we were the house band for the Whiskey Ogilvy for three years. Yeah, that's cool. The Whiskey yeah. is such royal. It's such a royal venue when it comes to rock. I, I it, one of the first bands that really made me inspired me to get involved with Guns N' Roses which of yeah, course right, that's yeah. all about the rainbow the whiskey yeah. the whole like sunset they were, strip they were one of the house they were one of the biggest house bands Molly Crew uh, was also another house band there oh Molly Crew's a house band they were and, one before of the they band. blew before blew they blew up, up. I guess. Yeah. yeah and we were one of the last house bands they don't have they don't do that anymore yeah because you, you're not you're not, you're younger than me I think how old are you I'm turning 38 yeah, the one forty two. We're kind of in the same. We're in the same ballpark. Yeah. yeah. So the because I I grew up on I guess I got into stuff like eighty nine to like through grunge like grunge early alternative rock. I was big Guns N' Roses, Pearl Jam. Yeah. Uh, I was really into Faith No More. I got I got re obsessed with Faith No More. Anything <laughs> Mike Patton did that whole Bay yeah. Area Metallica. Yeah. Fishbone. I love I Fishbone. Fishbone. Yeah, I dude. Fishbone, Fishbone and. Uh, yeah. Mr. Bungle. Mr. Bungle is probably my favorite, like weird band. Oh man, I I, I was more like, uh, well, because I come from a hip hop background, so originally okay. I came from like the Tupac time, the like N.W.A. Ice Cube right. that era. But then but it's I, that early '90s still. Right, but I also grew up listening to like reggae because of my uncles. Yeah, uh, I grew up listening to oldies because I come from a, I come from East LA, so everybody's a cholo. Yeah, you know, so I listen to a lot of doo wop, like that. Yeah, and then. Um, Hip hop started blowing up when I was a kid. Yeah. Now you like country. And I like everything now, to be yeah. honest. Like, I really do. And then what well, Mind Delay was more kind of like imagine if Rage Against the Machine and Pantera and Zeppelin had an orgy and they created a baby and that was us. Yeah, okay. And, you know, so we, we, we would, uh, that was kind of more my thing. Like, Head PE, I fucking love Head PE. Yeah, it's uh, like a, like a hip hop infused power groove, but then you got some throwback to yeah. classic riffs, exactly. I guess, with the Zeppelin. Yeah, oh, dude, our guitarist was sick. He, yeah. He, so you and you're a vocalist. Yeah. yeah I'm, the, yeah, I'm a do, do you play any instruments? Uh, I did the rhythm guitar. I didn't really. I'm yeah. not. I'm not a musician as far as like the instrument wise. I've never really. I'm. I'm basic when it comes. To, I'm a basic bitch when it comes to fucking the guitar, to be honest. But when it comes to vocals, that's a whole fucking. Different I'm just gonna story. let yeah. that one slide. That's true. I am. What? But, what? What's? What is your singing style like? If you compare yourself to another singer, karaoke. Uh, I, I can do karaoke. No, that's me. Now that's I do me. karaoke. You guys missed me. I did Foo Fighters right after you guys left. Oh, shit. No, no way. Oh, yeah. I feel bad um, that we missed that's it. Right. I'm a karaoke fanatic. They have punk rock karaoke at the Berlin down the Arts Why District. Do people oh, get so jazzed about karaoke. I don't get it. It's, it's so fun. fun. But, 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 because if you don't have a band, is the best way to yeah. pretend. That's true. Yeah. That, that's how I get my kids. Where's there. that karaoke bar in Vegas? It's like red inside, and it like they're like people that work on the strip that come there just to sing uh the the place What's there place is called? well there's dino's lounge dino's that that's it, it. oh yeah. my god i i literally went there one night and i was like 
this person's amazing. Like, why aren't they like on the radio? There are some amazing. There's a guy who came in and just rocked. I think it was it was one of the Journey songs, not uh, "Don't Stop Believing," but it was. Uh, it, it, but he was perfect. He did. Yeah. It, he did it perfect. He had. He, 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 like this guy performs in Fremont or something. Like, yeah. He's got to be there. And there's so many people like that out here who are professional singers yeah. who just fuck around at karaoke bars. Well, at that yeah. place, they wouldn't let you go up. Like if they didn't know you, like yeah. they were like, no. Well, you have like, to, they, like you're gonna ruin the vibe if you suck. And I was like, yeah. isn't this karaoke? And like everybody was like, this is not karaoke. This is literally a, a concert. We're at a concert right now. <laughs> Dino's was absolutely hopping. I think it was Thursday. I went there, like yeah. my friend. Pat Chase, who's another comic here, he's from Chicago. Mm-hmm. Pat is straight. He'll do a um, what is it? That up some more up up da 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 da. da. What is it? like the the conga? He starts conga lines in the in the karaoke bar and like works. That's with, awesome. Like, Pat's an entertainer. Just at the dirty at twelve thirty. Shout out to Pat Chase, one of my favorite people to have on this show as well. Oh, nice. Uh, but yeah, we we fucking party. And when I was in a band in Birmingham in college. Uh, it was all girl roommates who all lived in a house together, and there was a really good karaoke bar right around the corner. We do karaoke like five days a week. <laughs> like we just go rock it. I remember once I I had I I had a bunch of coffee and a bunch of beer, and I sort of blacked out. And I just remember I did, uh, oh, tearing up my heart by Insync. <laughs> oh man! And I I had I, I, I just recall having backup dancers on stage, and I got a, a pretty girl's number. At the end of it, but I don't really remember it. I just rocked. And you don't remember hard. her, right? Yeah. You didn't call her. <laughs> no, no we, we hung out a couple of times. But that was it. Yeah. yeah, she peed in my butt. And that was pretty much <laughs> the end of it. I, I, I was gonna ask. I was gonna ask. Thanks for thanks for She said up. paprika, and that was yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I was mid-stroke and I just froze. <laughs> so, uh, that's my programming. <laughs> that would that would be that would be our uh, our dominatrix session where you would you would say paprika in order to to torture me. When you, you had me doing, I'd do something that I really, I you know, I'd be like about to beat Sonic the Hedgehog, and you'd be like paprika, and I'd be like. No, I feel like because your thing is talking, right? I feel like the thing would be is that I'd put a gag ball in your mouth, and then I'd be like, "All right, tell me some stories." And, like, <laughs> and I'd be like, "Keep talking, bitch. You like to talk so much? Now is your opportunity." I hate you, Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Does your mouth hurt? Keep talking." Uh. So rock and roll, like you still that got say, real. so you like you you're really into the classic '90s hip hop and stuff. You like head PE, uh, Rage Against the Machine. Yeah, that Rage. Was my jam. Um, it was an underground band called Pax Two Seventeen. I was really big into back then as yeah. well. Uh, it was really that style. That was my that rap rock what corn. It, what would you do at karaoke? Oh you know, man, we, I, we we could all go to Dino's tonight. And uh, if, party. if, if I had to go up there, I, I, I would go do Rage Against the Machine easily. I totally want to take you to I, a I karaoke would, bar I, now. I would fucking and I would destroy it. Is yeah. that the song that you sang at that karaoke place in uh, Hacienda? I think Heights. so. Hacienda Heights. Yeah, yeah. Where Hacienda Heights. The place that. Stubbies? Yeah, no. Oh, that place that we went to, and you're like, "This is a Mexican joint. Like, <laughs> stay close." I don't fucking remember. <laughs> I don't remember at all. The last time I went to karaoke, not last night, the night, like two Sundays ago. It was two Sundays? After where, fresh meat. Where were you guys? Were in LA? Yeah. I don't remember. What the, fuck the old guy that kept buying me drinks, calling it dessert. He's like, will you do a dessert with me, mistress? And I was like, I love dessert, right? Not realizing it was a shot. I thought I was getting like a ho-ho or a Twinkie, right? He's it's like, like, I want hey, 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 Yeah, and then he like put his arm around me and I was like, oh. I was like, look at the time. I definitely don't remember anything. I think his name was John or Ray, and I was like, I like this guy. And all his friends were like younger. He sounds like a John. Yeah, and like all his, you know, uh, all his friends were like getting. They're like, why do you like this guy? He's old, and I was like, he has money. <laughs> I was I like, he's buying me drinks, you dumb fucks. <laughs> Take a page out of his book. Hello. I don't remember any of this. Oh my god, were you that you were that drunk? I must have been that drunk. Wow, Holy shit, I don't. Remember we did care. He, I think he <laughs> sang "Rage Against the Machine." Probably, anyways, probably. and it was phenomenal. Like literally, like every chola in that bar was like, "Ooh." What's your rage song that you do? Any of them? Yeah. What? what okay. What's your album? Uh, First I, album, second. So one? I like if I had to pick a couple songs, uh, my top three would be "Killing in the Name of People of the Sun," and. Uh, I like the oh, f- um, 
the one from the Tony, uh, the the not the first Matrix movie. Oh yeah, Wake Up. Wake Up, yeah. Yeah, those the first two. Those first two albums that Rage put out were game changers. I mean, Fuck yeah. it, that's really. That's how I learned what an Allen wrench is. To the Rage? <laughs> yeah, because Tom Morello, the if you oh, don't know the guitar yeah. player for Tom for Rage the Machines, a guy yeah. named Tom Morello, mm-hmm. and he does a lot of wacky sounds with the guitar, and that that open that. Meh, at the very beginning that's him scratching an Allen wrench on uh, the strings of the guitar he gives a lot of wild stuff he's super I, creative I actually met Tom a few times at the whiskey yeah Tom's a nice guy yeah I bet I, he, I, I met him when he was pushing his uh, his first solo album uh, oh okay I can't remember The Watchmen or whatever The Watch something yeah he did a thing where he was lending his particular sound to like hip hop artists and stuff for a little while yeah I think they were yeah. doing a whole crossover thing so you were doing up until what point were you doing music, and then you get when, when did that switch over to comedy for you? Um, so that was a big transition. So from I ended, I stopped doing music because well, okay, off and on I still kept doing it, uh, but when I left the whiskey band, that was like two thousand seven, mind delay, and then I went to the military in two thousand ten, and then for a little bit, towards the end of my first term. There was another band that I was messing around with called Luton Rock. They were out in the high desert in uh, California. And I just did a couple shows with them because they knew me from the Mind Delay days, like we were friends and whatnot. And they asked me to fill in so we, they can uh, wall their singer was down. So I filled in. It was a lot of fun. I did that for a while. That was nice. And then after, uh, I did one more project right before. It was like simultaneously when I got into comedy. When I got out of the military, it was 2017, 2018. And I got into comedy, and at the same time, I put myself back into music with this band called um, Kings vs. Gods. You can check us out on Spotify. <laughs> yeah. These <laughs> names are Kings terrible, by the way. But the music oh, is awesome. The music is awesome. Like, what's, just, your, what's your band's name? I don't have Mistress. one. <laughs> oh, my God. No, the band. That would be my name. Like, these names are already terrible. Taken. You need a better... It's like, well, stroke my ego. E- either way. Gods vs. Chumps. Yeah, That's yeah, what yeah. <laughs> The music's been Virgin so soft, versus really incels. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun, that, yeah. that band. And then uh, that was during, then the global pepperoni happened, like Mr. K calls it. Uh, yeah, I like, I like how you do it. You call it the global pepperoni. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It was. It was it can was we terrible. make it the global paprika now? The glo- <laughs> no, because then everybody be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of what happened, though, technically, right? So, yeah, that's when censorship. They're like, shut kinda, up, yeah, shut up. Happened. The guy's like, hey, I found this thing that actually kind of cures it. Like, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Paprika. Well, yeah, and then... You're yeah. off of Twitter. And then, so we... I stopped with them because of personal issues. You guys know... You know what it's like when you're trying to keep four people together. And you yeah, bands are a nightmare. Yeah, drummers suck. Um, hashtag paprika. Yeah, hashtag paprika <laughs> to drummers. And then uh, after that, I I guess I decided to take comedy a lot more seriously. Right. Because I, I focused on my endeavors on it. And by that point, about two years into comedy. What comedians years. do you like? What, who were the, who, like the band question was, the, who were the comedians <laughs> that got you into it? Well, the ones that actually got me into it are very different than the ones that influenced me. All right, well. So the ones that got me into it are actually some local comics, believe it or not. Yeah, um, well, LA is so full of like, no, good local comics. And one, is also, one is actually a currently one of the newest residents at the LA Comedy Club, uh, um, Julio Gonzalez. He was one of okay. the guys, uh, Jen Murphy and Joshua Higuera. All right. I, I saw the three of them at a show at the Irvine, uh, at the Irvine Improv. Right. I literally just got out of the military maybe a couple months before I saw them. And Josh came out in a boot. Like he just had surgery. And he came out in this boot and he was talking about being in the army. I immediately picture like him hopping up in a giant boot like Super Mario. <laughs> Dude, he's a tiny up. guy too. He, <laughs> he could have fit in a boot. Yeah, he could have. Like literally. So, but he's doing jokes up there and I'm sitting there and, I'm, and Julio went up and he did his thing and killed it. And Jen went up, she headlined and she fucking killed it. And I remember thinking to myself like, oh man, if these guys could do it, I could fucking do this, right? Like, God, you know I hate I mean? that when people say that. No, but... Well, cause I, I could be a dominatrix. Can chill, dr- no, you I can't. I could be a dominatrix. Well, then what ended up happening? Right, I got yeah. I got dudes tied up in my thing right now. You yeah, don't know. You don't know my yeah, life. Yeah, you don't know oh life. shit! I forgot to put the water bowl out. <laughs> I identify as a dominatrix. That's what I do. <laughs> Your pronouns. I just I'm transitioning. <laughs> he couldn't afford the hormone treatment anymore, so he's still yeah. there. But no, and then I started, and then I just uh, now I'm friends with all of them. 
you know, and uh, I've done shows with all of them. I hit the road with uh, Josh a lot, and uh, it's been fun. Comedy's been fun now, and now we're, me and Mistress K are actually we're on the road. a lot of shows out there. We're on the road. We do stuff now. That's awesome. Uh, where, do you guys, where do you guys perform besides California and Vegas? Where have you guys been? Um, I've done a tour in um, New York. Nice. And I've done a tour, I, I put together a tour in Minnesota and uh, <laughs> New Richmond, Wisconsin. Oh. Yeah. Killing it out in the Midwest. The there. dominatrix capital. I, I bet you. It was found, really fun in the some. barn, man. Telling jokes to these guys who are grass-fed, corn-fed beef guys, and I'm like, I'd punch you in the face, buddy. And he's like, Yeah. And his wife's sitting right there. She's like, Shut up. I was like, You're already with a dom. Sorry, dude. Yeah. Sorry. I was like, Sorry. I'm sorry. I wasn't talking to your sub without your permission. My dom is Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he pumps my gas. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, I've, uh, me, Arizona, Texas, Nevada, uh, regional shit. Yeah, just yeah. West Coast, pretty yeah. much. And now I'm working my way out towards the Midwest and then the East Coast. Oh, yeah, so. I've done te- I've done Texas and Seattle. Texas is fun. Seattle's I, yeah, I'm, wonderful. I'm, I'm going, I can't wait to go back to Texas. I'm going back next year. So I'm about like four and a half years deep and in comedy. And what I've been I've been talking to I try to focus on people who have you know as much or as a little bit more experience than me or a lot more experience. And yeah. what I've learned is that the real game changer is playing outside of your scene and then. You come back, and all of a sudden, my friend Antonio, he was in the first episode of this show, mm-hmm. and he was uh, just an open micer out here. He had a routine, you mm-hmm. know, he's a funny guy. But then he goes and is doing shows in Texas and stuff, and all of a sudden he comes back, and boom, he's leveled up. Ralph Tatella, same thing, the Wild mm-hmm. Carney. Mm-hmm. Uh, anybody who, uh, I guess Joe Calise, mm-hmm. if you've met Joe Calise, you haven't met a lot of people in the mm-hmm. scene, just the people at 18 Ben and Champagne's last night, right? Yeah, and um, the people that hang out at... Well, I used to go to Rebar when that place used to be open. Yeah, you were the Rebar mic? Yeah. Oh, that was a great mic. Yeah. Well, because you had... That was one of the only mics at the time that had... Everybody was there. Normal people hanging out, and everybody went to Mm -hmm. the Rebar mic. It Mm -hmm. was such a long list. I know. But you had regular bar patrons who would hang out, and they wanted to see... Because it's right... It's a The Rebar is... On down here on Main Street, I think in the Arts District, and yeah. it is a thrift store that is a bar. So you can it's a normal bar, but then everything on the walls and every you can buy it. Yeah, and, and there's board games and yeah. all that stuff. So, and that really kept people sticking around. It's a real cool like artsy hipster local mm-hmm. type thing. It's a well, fun we bar. we were actually talking about this on the car down here about uh, just the differences between the Vegas and the L.A. scene. Tell me about that. And how, like, you know, like, here's the thing. When when you tell people that you're an L.A. comic, like, any place else, like, people are like, oh, get them up. You know, they're amazing. You know, they must be awesome. Right. Right? And and the <laughs> Not thing... Not us. <laughs> and the, again, again, it's Vegas. Vegas is a little bit different. But I don't... I was telling him, I was like, I don't think that L.A. comics are better. I think it's just because uh, we have more practice. Yeah. Right? For like, sure. we have more mics. You can hit up literally, like, 11 mics in a day if you're That's insane. Incredible. If you want to do that. No, um, also, there's a sh- there's shit ton of shows, like, every night. It's not just, like, 18 bin is the place we go at 8 o'clock on Tuesdays. Right. You know, it's like, there's literally show here, show, show, like, everywhere. So there's just more opportunity for you to kind of hone in on your craft and get up more yeah. um, rather than, like, a smaller scene like Vegas, which, I mean, no, you know, I'm not trying to no, shoot on right. the scene here, but it's very small. Like, everybody kind of knows each other and hangs out right. with each other. And, like, I I kind of appreciate your scene because it's more community-based where right. because everybody kind of knows each other. Right. Whereas L.A., it's like... The scene is so vast, right? I'm like maybe six people separated by every other comic in L.A. Gotcha. Like I know a big ton. I, you know, I produce shows every month, so it's like I know a bunch. But um, in the same sense, it's Josh calling you. Uh, in the same sense, it's not. It, it's bigger than Vegas, and uh, you know, I just don't like when people are like, "Oh, you're Los Angeles. Get her up there. She's really amazing." I mean, yeah. I am. So I. I I hold through to that stereotype, but when we went to Minnesota, they were like, "Oh, you're from LA." Like they hated that, and I was like, "Listen, an LA two in Minnesota is an 11. Yeah. okay?" <laughs> like, so you know, I was like, "There's something to be said about that." Yeah. It- 
It, when I go back, if I ever get on a dating app back home in Mississippi, it's like I'm 42 and I open it up and it's just like the arms of an angel, like depressing music starts playing when I open the app. It's it's such a bummer. Like if you ever want to know like you're, it's, 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 it's so, because it's traditional, like there's not that many people there and nobody's really involved with uh, presentation, presentation industry. It's like, like Las Vegas is presentation, showbiz, you know, LA of course is yeah. the thing. New York is very bomb. There's a lot of performance. There's a lot of theaters. There's a lot of mics. There's a lot of everything. opportunities to pray. Yeah, there's a lot of everything. Yeah. New York, you always hear about people being able to do like 10 mics a day. Mm -hmm. LA, you hear about that. Mics are coming up in Austin. There's a lot of mics there. But Austin is more close to like, I guess, the Vegas scene where you could probably do one every day. And you could probably do, like, you do a few mics. Like, if you come in and you're a bookable comedian, not just an open micer, you could yeah. be in Vegas a week and do at least one mic every single day, which is a lot compared to other places. Because after Vegas, it drops off substantially. Oh, yeah. Like you know, well, every time I come to Vegas, I'm. I'm usually doing like three to like th three to five shows every time I'm out here. Like this yeah. week, this week I'm I'm on four, and then are I'm you, doing are two you, guest spots. Are you guys both doing Chonklas tonight? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, we were both awesome. to Lex Las Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna be at Rick's Smoking Barbecue tonight also. Yeah, Steve um, McAnally shot. I love Steve. I love Steve. And then tomorrow I'm gonna be at the Backyard in uh, and Henderson, Henderson. Yes, with Diaz. Diaz. Uh, Kitty Pine is uh, headlining. Angie Crum and I are featuring. Yeah. And then uh, Friday, I'm at the Island Island La Island Lava Lounge. I think it's called. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they serve this. Is, is drink. it the, the Kava Kava it's Kava Lounge? That's, that's right down. That's right down the road. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna be there. At the, I'm gonna be at the Kava Lounge. Is Friday that with is Kitty also. that Delilah? Is she doing that one? Because uh, she's done a show at that uh, one before, but I don't remember. No, I know Kitty's headlining nice. that one. Kitty's headlining. Yeah, that's right. that that's the Kava Lounge on Friday. Yeah, Friday. Okay, also. cool. And then Sunday, I'm back in California. So okay, at, at Firewater uh, in Ontario. I dude, I yeah, I I love hitting the road. I love being booked. That's my favorite thing. Like you said. Um, and that doesn't just apply to comedy, that applies to music as well. And I sure. think that also applies to just any discipline where you have to, you don't really grow. Uh, there's only so much growth you can have in your home area. Yeah. When you go outside your home area, that's when you're really testing, you really find out what you're made out of. You know what I'm saying? Because now you're going up against people you don't know. You're going up against situations you've never been in. And like ever since I hit the road two years ago or a year and a half ago, I've substantially grown as a comedian, like yeah. by leaps and bounds. It's impossible not to, I think. Yeah. Once, it, well, you, once you travel, the only way you don't is if, well, you still have to put in the right work, right? Because you could hit the road, be a terrible comedian because you never listen to anybody, you never take any advice, you're just so stuck in your ways that you've closed off everybody, and you've closed off the chance to grow. You need to have the right mindset for it, I think, at the same time. For sure. Well, you, know? it's, you have to... One thing that music, mixed martial arts, and comedy all have in common is that if you're not honest about how you come off to a stranger, mm -hmm. then you can't grow. You no. can't get better. You have to... You can't have an ego be like, I'm the best, and but it's like, well, no, you're not getting... You're not making them laugh, so that there's really the only thing you have to do. You make people laugh. It doesn't matter how you do it. If you're yeah. talking about... You know, you know, going to the laundry room or uh, peeing in butts or whatever it is. Like you, if you can get the last per minute, then you get the last per minute. And if you don't, then you need to figure out how to adjust it. No, hundred percent. Or quit. With, Please quit. Yeah. Or, <laughs> yeah, or, uh, yeah. I'm trying to get booked. Just quit. <laughs> it, yeah, yeah. It just want to quit those, taking up space. No, I, I, like <laughs> I always tell people, like, look, you get into you get into any whatever you put into things, that's what you're gonna get out of. Mm. You know. But at the same time, if you don't put the right things into it, you're not gonna get the right things out of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and I've seen seasoned veterans that have been doing comedy like twenty years get up and just bomb like hardcore. It yeah. happened Sunday. Guy's been doing comedy for twenty years. He had three minutes in a comedy competition that I'm producing and uh, bombed. And I mean, like, not like, oh man, that joke didn't hit. Like, as if. Like deer in the headlights, no sound. Oh Bomb. wow! Damn. Like, got <laughs> like and then wow. and then was like, I hate this. Wow. I can't believe I had to go first. First of all, you drew the straw first. Yeah. Okay, but, that's what happens. You signed up for it. <laughs> Fuck and, man. And then if you've been doing comedy for twenty plus years, how are you not used to biting the bullet by that point? You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like I'm five years in, almost five years in, dude. Doesn't matter where you put me in the lineup. Well, I think it's a lot harder to do a short set if you're used to doing twenty minutes. Or thirty minutes. That's I agree fault, with you know? that. I mean, one hundred percent. That that's, a, that's it's not an excuse, but that's it's a, a lack of training. Of course, it's a well, lack of proper training on. on yeah, the, if you're on not the, used to doing, part. it's a very different format. You see, like uh, Kill Tony, 
Yeah. Right? They kill Tony, yep. uh, Tony and Cliff, yep. and they give everybody one minute. And that's a very different thing than someone who's used to. For me, if I meander, if I have a long time, I'll find the punchlines and the callbacks and stuff. But uh, I don't write nearly enough. But what, you know, when I do write, I have you know weapons on deck and I toss them out there and can adapt. But a lot of times, it's searching for those connections live mm-hmm. that helps it to work. And you just can't do that in a minute. You've got to be like pop, 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 pop. You know, you got to know what you're saying. Well, yeah, you got to pick your best joke that you know you're going to get the most laughs for that will accommodate the time yeah. or give the time back. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you can't do that and kill Tony. They'll hold yeah. you up there and then they will talk to you for 20 minutes. The worse they are, the more they talk to him. It seems They're like we're going to squeeze some entertainment for this audience out of you one way or another. I know. I've seen the Kill Tony show. It's obviously. There's not that many women that get on it, by the way, BT Dubs. Um, <laughs> I'm going to stick up for my lady comics, but. I've seen a couple of the. I've seen a couple of people just get destroyed on that show, man. Well, the people who get awesome. the, the people who don't have a good time there, it, if they're even though their set doesn't isn't great, are the ones who think that they're better than they are, yeah. and that's always the worst attitude. I, mm-hmm. Somebody comes into um, they used to sick me on tough guys at the jujitsu gym where they like, had some bouncer. The, all the we were right next to the, where the clubs were in Birmingham. They would walk by our gym. Be like, oh, what are they doing in there? They'd be like, oh, well, I used to do a keto or taekwondo or something. Was, I'd probably be good at this or whatever. They'd say, hey, yeah, wrestle this 19-year-old psychopath who's, you know, trying to, and I'd just big smile on my face and wrap them up and be like, hey. And then they never come back, usually. Yeah. A, a couple of them stopped smoking and started training with us and got good, though. Yeah. So it's all the guys, well, ego. I yeah, aspire yeah. to be like you, only in comedy. Yeah. I'd be like, don't come back here. We don't want your weak ass shit yeah. on our stage. Well, it's it's you're not contributing to the gym if you're just mm-hmm. being obnoxious. You're just being annoying at that point. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if you're not learning, you're not getting better. You're not asking questions of people who are kicking your ass. You mm-hmm. know, you're thinking like, I'm yeah. gonna win this time. No, you're not. not What's win. annoying though is that those com- those same comics that do terribly or bomb are the same people that turn around next week and go, hey, can I get some stage time? Yeah. And you're like, for what? Like, yeah. go practice somewhere else. Right. <laughs> and, you know, as, as, as someone that produces shows, I, I, I think it's important for comics to understand that, and I think you'd agree with me on this, like, if you're going to come to a booker or you're going to hit someone up for time, at the very least, be fucking professional. Be ready. Be ready, man. Have your fucking shit together. You know, be like, hey, like, and then if we tell, if we ask you something like, how many minutes do you have? Sorry. You know? Like, how many minutes do you have? Like, be Liquid honest. Jelly. Be honest. Don't tell me you have 15 when you only got five. Right. Or 10, you know? Tell me the fucking truth. If you got 10 minutes, hey, I only got 10 minutes. Okay, cool. I can work with 10 minutes. Well, sure. Listen, I can tell comics when they go up on stage. Right away. How long they've been oh, doing comedy? Instantly. First joke. Instantly. How's everybody doing tonight? Oops. <laughs> First of all, buddy, everybody's asked that. Like, pay attention. Read the room. Fucking nobody cares. Nobody's gonna give you a quick woo. You know, like shut the fuck up. Go into your joke. That's one advantage you guys have in LA because you get to see such a diversity of performers, high low, and you have so many different venues for those performers to practice in mm-hmm. yeah. that you learn to adapt, you learn what works, you learn what doesn't, and the learning curve is so much sharper. Just like in New York. In Vegas, it's I was talking to Benny Pitts, who's an Atlanta comedian who lives here now, mm-hmm. and he was telling me that in Atlanta, it's it's he started off like with big time famous comedian celebrities at the open mic you mm-hmm. know and so it was it was real like shit or get the public like let's get moving and he comes to vegas and his description of it is, is you have a lot of opportunities to practice but the added the pressure is very very low very low risk low reward yeah. but so if you use it as like a dojo for you to train like a weight room and you know how to but you have to get out of the scene in order to know how to practice you got to know where your weak points are because here people will either that, you know, if you're doing great, you're doing great. But if you're not doing great, people are like, meh. And you might be able to tell yourself that you're, you know, they're not going to chase you off stage or anything. You can tell, though, because when certain people go up in your scene, that's people when I'm like, oh, it's a bathroom break. <laughs> they're like, oh, I'm going to yeah, go to yeah, the bar yeah, and get a for drink. Sure. And I'm like, oh, this person's really terrible. Like, even the locals are like, click. <laughs> yeah, we've I mean? seen yeah. this a bunch of times. I mean, I'm good. <laughs> but I really love how supportive you guys are because you'll do that. <laughs> and then the guy will come up and be like, great job, killer set. And I'm like, did they just watch what I watched? Like, yeah. I'm like, oh, you guys are nice here. You stroke each other's egos. It's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> what I love about the Vegas scene, I think that stands out to me about this, ever since the first time I came here, was um, as long as you're cool, you're funny, and 
you know, like you're willing to Your name ask the Dick. right questions, you get like people they'll help you. Yeah, yeah, if you if you're willing to put the effort in, like yeah. if, if you have any amount of potential, I always see guys at new open mics and I someone who's new to the open mic scene. And I wonder, like, what is their final form? Because you say, like, okay, well, yeah. what if they got really good? Like, in 10 years or whatever, like, yeah. they got really sharp. What would that look like? That yeah. could be amazing, you yeah. know, right now. And so I'm always, like, di- mining for diamonds in, like, the new open micers. Because they're really interesting personalities out here. Because only psychopaths want to move to Las Vegas. That's my, that's oh, why our art, that's why our arts district is I awesome. I can agree. You know, I can agree with that. I definitely can. Because, you know, who's thinking about moving out here? This one. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I totally well, agree with that. Well, I mean, there are lots property. of dungeons they could work out of. So. It's a lot cheaper than mm-hmm. L.A. And it there's nothing is. but weirdos who come in and a steady supply of yeah, fantasies. potentials. Yeah, the, she's already shaking and quivering over here. Look at that. Yeah, because I'm just thinking about the money in my bank account. Yeah, ching. <laughs> it's gonna be. It, it is. I mean, it is a big place. A lot of uh, people who are involved in, a lot of porn stars live in Las Vegas and work in L.A. That's really common because they're like show business, but they're not like, show you business, know, yeah. Hollywood like whatever. So the we just had um, Katie Morgan and. Evan Stone, if you know the, the great Evan Stone mm-hmm. uh, classic. I know his work. Yeah, and they, they, <laughs> they've, um, Evan has been doing comedy here lately, so he's oh, been shit. popping up in the scene. Oh, oh shit. shit. Yeah, oh, wow. he's a really cool guy. I mean, he was he was always my favorite, like, on the, he was on the skin of Mac, but he always had this goofy look, like, this is fucking ridiculous, I'm doing this, right? <laughs> like, on his face the whole time. And now I get to hang out with him. It's pretty cool. Nice guy. Is it weird that you've seen his dick that many times? You know what I'm saying? Like, of course I, you would ask that. It would. You would think it was weird, but not really, because it's just. I don't know. It's it's like uh, if you have a friend who's a stripper and you happen to see her at work sometime, but then you guys hang out normally outside of. I grew up like, with strippers, I, so that, I get it. You know what I, I mean? That. It's like okay, that's that's what you do. You know, not not at the Olive Garden, but you know we can. You can go have a beer and talk some shit about who you're dating or whatever, you know? <laughs> can you get the glitter off your face first? Yeah. That That's one way you can tell. I have a theory on that where um, you can you can know there's so many people who are strippers here that you'll see a normal hot girl who is like, she could be a stripper, but the way you can tell is she's just got a little bit of sparkles. They have, there's like, let's say on a range of one to ten, there's extra stuff that women can do to their appearance to make themselves look you know, interesting or attractive or whatever. I don't know. Your hair is different than it was last night. Don't talk like you don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, I know. And there's a bunch of options. And um, a regular girl will do anything between, like, a one and, like, a six as far as the amount of regular stuff, makeup and jewelry and outfit and so on. A stripper will always have that extra, like, seven, eight, and then a hooker is going to be ten. (laughs) <laughs> Hookers have all they have. They have all the trendy tattoos. They have all the extra makeup. They have the extra hate, all of the stuff. I don't think you've ever been to Pomona. You've never seen our hookers over there. Mm. Oh, what well, treasure! Don't Just don't saying. don't get me wrong. We've got we've got hookers on in, on Boulder Highway too. That's <laughs> you know we we've got we've got Boulder Highway hookers uh, as well. But when I and, or if I pick up, uh, I drive Lyft, and so if I pick somebody up and it just. All the it's a billion girls dressed up. It's just mm. all this perfume. It's like first she's going on a date, unless and this is like a sixth sense thing. You can tell that all that perfume is somehow designed to hide something nasty. Oh yeah, yeah. and uh, then that's a hooker. That's how you can tell. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, the, nasty, the musk. The nastiest uh, is like what, uh, you're tr- you're trying to trick me right now, aren't you? You don't uh, smell dude, like that's that. So <laughs> gross. I'm just thinking about pretzels. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it could be pretzels. <laughs> Why do they sell so like sourdough pretzels? You know? uh, I don't know. I remember I picked up this woman. <laughs> diet. Who, that's uh, your diet. That's all the meat you've been eating there. That's all the like garlic I hear. Right there. That's what I hear. I had, all a, the... I had a lift ride with this, this woman, and she struck me as maybe she was a call girl or something like that. And I choose during the when people were in masks, and I could smell her breath in the front through seat the mask? through the mask. Oh, it was horrendous. Oh. It was just you know we say oh so what do you what do you do? It's like and they're like oh this and that. <laughs> so, oh you're okay so you're a hooker you can tell me it's hard I'm a Lyft driver I'm basically a, a hooker that downloaded my job. You know. I I um was partying in this hotel room in Pomona. Co- uh, coincidentally, so you guys live? You guys live in Pomona? <laughs> no, I do. Yeah, he does. Um, I live in a bougie area, and anyways, I was in this party, and this I heard this hooker go, 
oh, don't worry, baby, it happens all the time. <laughs> Right, and she's like, "Do you have a rubber?" And the guy goes, "No." She's like, "It's cool." And then I heard her go like, shh, 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 "Right." She used the trash bag oh, Jesus. from the bathroom trash, and I was like, "I'm pretty sure there was trash in that bag." Like it was just like, Ugh. "That's a that's a MacGyver hooker." That's well, a, the weird thing was is that that bag, the was trash still bag, was on the floor in the bathroom, and I was just like. I was like, go handle that player. That's disgusting. Wow. Oh, I wonder how much disgusting. money she made off of that trash bag, trash bag bang. I don't $21. Know. I don't know, but... Yeah. Um, she made $21.97. <laughs> yeah. Depending on Holt and put him on. That's what I think it was. That it was going to be $27, uh, $21 even, but, but the trash bag... Is she had to buy the trash bags. She had to buy yeah. the trash bags. <laughs> she deducted. Yeah. $21. Yeah, I wonder if you I've had tax season is... I had a... Uh, Last yesterday, we had a guy who is a longtime Vegas comedian, but also does taxes. Mm. So like, but he's been doing taxes in Vegas for like forty years. Mm. This dude, he's talking about like just people bringing all this cash and like how to write this off. He knew all the forms and everything, but I can't imagine. I've been doing taxes in Vegas, especially during the mob days, was absolute bananas. So but just fun. because there's so many people that work off of tips. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. it's like the Vegas community, if I could describe it, is like. The locals, we all work in the same bar. It's a huge citywide bar, but we mm-hmm. all work bar jobs, and it's people who come to visit us, and then we're like, all right, let's see how cool these people are. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Comedy is more like we're excited to find out about your scene and like what you guys have going on, especially L.A. people, although I have, we have had L.A. people come through where they sort of fall into that. There's the L.A. Uh, the L.A vibe like the energy like like for example people will come in and they'll just start rattling off like uh, anti Trump uh memes like from Facebook you know what I mean they expect to get like an applause break from something that it's like okay we, we get it that's that's how you feel but we also have Facebook so if you've written anything and they, they look genuinely surprised when they don't get well a good reaction. We're, from okay that. so I I feel like I need to make it like we need to make a distinction. When we say LA, that's a big statement. We're not a lot from, of, at least I'll put the. I'm not from the bougie part of LA. Personally. What is the bougie part of so, LA? How do you how do you uh, chop LA up? LA is chopped up into different sections. All right. When people think of LA, in my opinion, I think they think of Hollywood. That's what I think that people think of. They think of the pretentious. They think of the... Like how when the, people who are not the, American think of America, they think of Texas. Yes. Yeah. Whereas when you think of L.A., you're thinking of, like, the dude that, like, is into the mocha frappuccino, who's he's into, you know... Skinny jeans. Skinny jeans, PC <laughs> culture, that whole shit. Yeah, I'm memes. not from that part of L.A. Right. I'm from East L.A. I live in Pomona now, but I'm from the part that we rob those motherfuckers. You yeah. Know what I mean? like, that's <laughs> the part I'm from. You know? Right. Like, we talk shit about those guys. So yeah. when I well, we're more from LA County, that's where we produce shows at. So it's like LA adjacent, right? So uh, it's like LA County, Inland Empire. That's an Orange County. It's everything outside of oh, LA. Good old Orange County. Yeah, it's yeah. everything. Let me outside tell you of where LA. the housewives live. Oh, oh yeah, that's where the- it's fucking crazy. OC. It's it's funny, OC. But those are the areas that we mainly go into produce at. Um, also downtown LA, but it's it's not the type of. I'm not that LA comic. Like, I'm not right. going to come up here. Neither of us are going to come up here and spout that kind of rhetoric. You know what I mean? We have our own originality. We yeah. talk about our own things. We're our own individuals. I don't subscribe to this PC shit, personally. I will, like, if you want to cancel me, go fuck yourself. That's what I'll tell you. That's fine. I, right. All I got is debt, so cancel that shit. Yeah. You know, I don't give a fuck. Um, if you get hurt by anything, or you get offended by anything me or any comic says on one of my shows or our shows, I don't care. Personally, I, I will laugh in your face. I right. will because I it's comedy, folks. At the end of the day, we're comedians. Why are you right. taking us seriously? Yeah, yeah. I'm it also was, from Boston, so there you go. Yeah, <laughs> she really. I'm not fake. Boston. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, oh, hey, the cops are here. They found out. I like okay, it. a Mexican's here. Let me see what this says. I like uh, it. Uh, I think it was Amazon. His hooker arrived. I think his hooker arrived. That's, guy, yeah. <laughs> that's up, what's up. happening. It's his schedule to get peed in his butt. <laughs> yeah. I think my son's grandmother sent him some packages. Oh, that's nice. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's funny. You never know. This is a pretty cool uh, apartment area, though. We have it's it's very it's like living in an iPhone. Like everything is hooked up to Wi-Fi. You can, I can I can control most of my stuff from my phone. That's pretty cool. It, Easy to hack. 
Is it us? <laughs> Probably, huh? Yeah. You're like, the code to my gate is this, the code to... I was like... I was like, is he giving us the code to his apartment, too? Like, we walked up, and there was, like, a key fob on the outside. And I was like, pretty sure that's not the... Yeah, I actually, I actually don't know that code. I have, to, I have to talk to the code company. I've, I've got all the other stuff on my phone. How do you get in your house, then, if you don't know the code to your own knock? He's got a I'm key, dumb. Yeah, there, oh. there's a dragon that lives in my place. I have a troll that... I have to solve a riddle. I have to solve, a, a, yeah. Yeah. Again I have to solve a riddle, and then I get into my place. And then, okay, do you got to pee in the troll's butt, too? Is that what happens at the end? Or? It, it depends on the, like, how confident. Okay, really is. Dick fetish. <laughs> it's it's signed, sealed, and delivered. Yeah, there you go. Peanut okay. butts. That's I'm telling you, you got to get one of those. What do you call it? The lady. Shewees. I have two in my car. What do they call them? Shewees. Shewees. Yeah. Which is so women can pee while driving. Yeah. Like men can in kombucha bottles, which is what we do. Kombucha yeah. bottles. <laughs> <laughs> they've got because they've got a wider rim. Um, I just used a Gatorade yeah. bottle, bro. Like, they've got a wider go. rim you too. Get on that, man. Sixty-four ounce one, dude. If you're Look. peeing more than sixty-four ounces, you got to go to a doctor. Only. That's what I'm saying. Okay? Man, you should not be peeing more than sixty-four ounces. And this is why women will not pick these two. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, I, hey, I already hey, I've got skills. Hey, I, okay, I, for I, 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 I can stand on my head for a full minute. Shit. Do all kinds of stuff. Oh yeah, that's all right. Mm-hmm. We're in Vegas. We can pay for it. You know, so yeah, that's true. That's that's the that's the business you're trying to get into and pop in. How would you advertise? Would it just be word of mouth if you were to move to Vegas to? So I have a Fat Life account. Then I I have lots of people that slide into my DMs mm-hmm. and um, referrals. Referrals are kind of the. The, jam. the best way because you can kind of get a feel for people through other people you know like if this guy who's into like having cockroach on his skin like I know I'm gonna have another guy who's into fucking insects on him you know what I mean like it's not wow. like somebody's <laughs> gonna be like I just like to be cuddled and told that I'm amazing I feel like me and Dick have, have underestimated the diversity of clientele that come across <laughs> because it, like bugs yeah. Oh, yeah. dude, wait, wait, no, that's not even the worst one. <laughs> all right, she do? told me one. That, <laughs> what is it? I can't give all my pearls out. <laughs> oh, no, you gotta tell them that one. You gotta tell them what? that one. The maggot one. Oh. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, it's kind of a bug. Yeah, it's this guy, he, I, I filled up a tub full of maggots with him. A tub? Yeah. Where'd tub. you get all the maggots? I, I know a guy on the uh, internet. I, <laughs> I, I got a maggot. I got a maggot. I did. Guy. I She's bought so guy. many fucking insects that I got a discount. Um, but yeah, I give my fantasy, I give my clients the fantasy that they pay for, not the one they deserve. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. It Wait, was... so did the maggot guy want something else? And you're like, you get maggots today. No, just he wanted listen. maggots. Just and um, all right, all right, I'll listen I would put it. food strategically placed on areas. Uh-huh. And then the, the maggots would just like, whew, like all kind of formulate around certain areas of his body. And um, I'm pretty sure he had uh, maggots up his poop shoot at, at some point. Um, cause I strategically, like I said, placed them there <laughs> and, um, yeah, I had him go down and down the urethra and come back up for air. Oh, wow. So it was a whole thing. It was a whole jam. Do you see what I mean? Do you see what I mean? Yeah, what, uh, Sorry. what was, how was he behaving during this thing? Oh, he was very, very hard. Very, very aroused by this wow. whole thing. And he's like, I'm, he's like, call me your dirty little piece of trash. <laughs> he's like, you fucking trash panda. <laughs> <laughs> trash panda. Tra- you call him a trash panda? I, <laughs> I know, I'm living my best life out here, people. Hashtag like, trash panda. Yeah. I, I, I again, wanna... I love this because oh. people are into some, and again, I am a judge, I, for the most, I would like to judge, but I am a judgment-free zone when it comes to people and what they want to pay me for. Yeah. Because I'm just like, okay. Like, I draw the line. Like, I do have boundaries. Um, All right. Tell me about your... What's your personal fabric? I don't like anything that has to do with physically leaving marks that you'll go on carrying the rest of your life. Um, I don't Mm -hmm. like any kind of blood play uh, because it triggers the other side of my brain, which I was a nurse for 15 years, so I'm just uh, like, get him a band-aid! You know, I'm just like, I cauterize the wound! That actually explains a lot. Don't you used to be do a nurse. Nurses do not give a fuck about any of that <laughs> stuff. Nurses are some of the toughest women <laughs> ever. Honey. I've seen some shit in the hospital. I was like, yeah, that that job is worse than the job that I do. Yeah. Putting maggots on someone's body. It's like, meh. You know, we use maggots actually in the hospital too for people who have uh, pressure ulcers that lead to wounds and wound care. It's as a form of debriefing. 
I've heard about that. Yeah, they yeah. eat away the necrotic tissue mm-hmm. yeah. and leave Mac- only the good stuff. And leeches also are another form of... Uh, yeah. Yeah, leeches not so much these days, but uh, they can be used, but it's mostly maggots. Being a nurse is like being a dominatrix, but nobody's having a good time. And there's way more paperwork. I think I, 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 I would disagree. I think the dominatrix is having a really good time. I feel That's like I should saying. be covered the, under the insurance. The dominatrix, someone the people are having a great time. The nurse is just like no one's really enjoying this. I, I, it's I, funny though because when I did work as a nurse, I'd crack up jokes of like just the weird stuff, and I'd be like, you know, I'd be like knee deep in like necrotic tissue, and I'd be like, do you come here often? You know, like, yeah. like all this stuff, right? And people are like, you're really funny. You should be a comedian. And I was like, oh, people with traumatic brain injuries aren't really my target. Yeah. <laughs> They're really easy to crack up. Yeah. Vegas comedy might be your place. That might that be makes sense. you know. That makes sense. If the shoe fits yeah. or the boot, right? No, I'm just kidding. The, the headdress or the maggot. <laughs> yeah. Again, I've done a lot of Dude. a lot of colorful some things. things. Some of those stories I hear, I'm just like, well, I thought I've seen some shit, you know. Like, yeah. That was ugh, that maggot thing. That was gross. Well, she specializes in. In weird stuff. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. it's it's like you're like a personal trainer, but your clients like nobody can ever know that I'm trying to get in shape. Yeah. 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 Which is why Tom is Tom's name is not really Tom and uh, Bob or whatever I yeah. call on stage. I'm like I'm this client Tom. It's what, never Tom. What was the maggot guy's life like outside of your interaction? You know, I don't really ask people that, but um, I do know that he, when he came over, he came in in a very nice, expensive suit and nice shoes. Yeah. So he must have had some kind of high-paying job. Um, I did know that I did pee on uh, one of the chief operating officers for Schmuber, and uh, What's he. What's Schmuber? Schmuber. Schmuber. Oh, Schmuber. Yeah. Oh, right. That one. That one. And um, back in the day, back when you were getting into the military, I was pissing on this guy. And uh, that was interesting because he asked me to eat a whole bunch of stuff. He was like, does your pee smell when you have uh, as- asparagus? And I was like, it uh, does. He's like, wonderful. <laughs> He's like, could you eat some before you come over? You know what? I got to give it to that guy. Though. At least he didn't go sure. down. He might be down with R. Kelly, but at least he wanted to, he, you know, he was willing to go down the legal route. Listen, so it, yeah. it was the I best, it was the best that. non-date date I had been on. I mean, I literally got flown out from Boston, helipad on a private jet to New York City and um, you know I had 15 minutes peed and then he was like would you like some dinner and I was like I'd love some dinner <laughs> and then go back on the flight and went home it was wonderful Damn. cash up front you know Wow. how wow. you doing hashtag if uh, anybody wants me to pee in their butt and fly me out to them <laughs> yeah. I will fucking do it so no I'm uh, I'm actually Dick Solace's pimp jet. I'm yeah, gonna negotiate the rates here he's ready to go <laughs> I'm just saying, you gotta fly me out, dude. First class only, motherfucker. First class only, or private. That's it. That's I mean, I urine do. isn't bad. It's like the poop stuff that right. guys are kind of weird that about. Shit, dude, the it, fact th- that's the thing too. Like guys want you to shit on them, stuff. or like yeah. And I'm a vegetarian. Uh, and I'm like, uh, dude, it's not gonna be pleasant for you. Uh, <laughs> like, it's not what you're hoping for. <laughs> they get under- well, when crazy. I was hiking in bear country, you could always tell what the bear had been eating because if it smelled like human shit, it means they'd gotten some meat, and mm. if it didn't, I mean, they were still in like nuts and berries. Yeah. Mm. For that season, they they like to take dumps right on the trail, wherever they know people are gonna be. Just like let them know, what's up, dude? Yeah, like, we're, we're here. We're out. We're out here. This is our yeah, territory. I'm watching you. Fuck but, that. Yeah, I that, might, that might be my fetish. I'm scared of bears. <laughs> <laughs> like, Which so, ones that wear leather? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, are you talking about that like big gay hairy man? Are you, That's. Are I mean, thanks. Keep up. <laughs> you know, if I if I got on a bus, and it was all. Really, any category of bear, uh-huh. especially if it was a mix of like animal bears and gay bears. Uh-huh. Who would you be more afraid of? I the animal bears for sure, <laughs> for sure because, because they 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 won't they don't pretend to like you first. <laughs> and You've never been on uh, grizzly. Uh, which gri- is like grizzly. I think grizzly. I think that's one of the gay ones. Gay oh, bears. Oh, is that a website? It's like an app that you can get like big bears. Wait, oh what? yeah, for yeah. the no hairy big I bears. I have I have, a, I have a surprisingly few gay dating apps on my phone. Oh, you sure? It's a shame. Yeah. Yeah. you're missing half the market. Just saying. <laughs> Hang out, open up your niche. Just saying. I feel like LA comedy is, I mean, uh, Vegas comedy scene is sort of, it's got a real gay bar vibe to it in the sense that, like, just, (laughs) 
Like I know. Every male comic is like, that guy wanted to suck my dick. I'm like, no, everybody <laughs> wants to suck your dick, sir. And I'm like, why have you told me this three times? Is this something you want to tell us? Who of my friends has tried to suck whose dick against I, their will? I, that's what I want to know. That's what I want to know, too. Against their will? Well, <laughs> yeah, the guy's like, oh, was he like, hell yeah, this guy wanted to suck my dick? Or, oh no, this guy wants to suck my He's dick. He's like, I don't know why he keeps wanting to suck my dick. I'm like, I don't know why you keep telling me this. Like, I'm not going to suck your I, dick. I, <laughs> because I would, people, I would ask him, why don't you just ask him? I'm like, is there something you want to tell us? I'm like, it's 2022. It's okay to be fluid. Like, yeah. and I'm like it's just a mouth player. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I want gender fluids in my mouth. That's what we're trying to do. Oh, God. Ooh, spicy. Right. Yeah. If you do it in a car, it's called tranny thing. fluid. That's the. Uh, I know. That's a white. Is that a bad word? Is that, that is that a bad word in LA? Tranny? No. Um, it it's depends. Not nice. so you guys, you guys don't it like. Okay, so you you used to be a nurse, and you're from Boston originally, mm-hmm. and you're dominatrix now, mm-hmm. which borderlines on. Uh, you know, you're also very you're a feminist, right? Big time. Oh, yeah, what sure. does that mean? Because there's a lot of there's been different. Oh, I know art, he hates this. There's been different there indications of like because uh, you hear about like the the first wave, second wave is very different mentalities, right? Yeah. Like I, I don't know. I don't think I've really had a good conversation with a feminist before. Take yeah. me a little background of what that is for you. Um. So for me, fem- feminism is just the equality for everyone. Right. So it doesn't matter your your gender, your sexual preference, uh, di- you know, age. Um, sexual orientation like anything like race nothing i don't care i just want everything to be equal for everyone um as a woman i'd like to be paid the same as a man right so I when, don't, you, when you were the a wage nurse, gap there, is terrible were there male nurses who had the same experience as you who were making more money than you as no a, there's not very many male nurses um there may be more now but um I went to school with like four. But what I'm saying with the pay gap, if you're working as a nurse, who's been, if you've been a nurse for three years, they made years, more money than us. Really, male 100%. nurses get paid more. Yes, that's not true. I can I, I can tell you that's not true. Because well, he's been a nurse. That's not it. I, okay, I, I've looked at the studies. I've looked at the data, and there's okay. Here's here the wage gap does exist. I will say it does. Now, but it only exists in corporate settings. That's why we're here. I'm being serious. Like and I, I can pull I can pull the studies. Okay. It exists in corporate settings, like because if you look at all jobs across the board, like blue collar jobs, everybody gets paid the same in those jobs. But that's not what the complaint is. The complaint is that women supposedly make seventy seven cents on the dollar that men do. Right. But that's only applied to the CEO white collar jobs. The, that, Literally. That number comes from a very, very broad study, which is all jobs, and then you see yes. how much men it, make and how much men... But it's, no, it's not like qualified as far as who, what demographics take which jobs, right? Like, no, it does. Because if you look at... Okay, because if you look at across the board, like the Eli Guarantee, uh, the, like if you look at like the Netherlands, Netherlands is one of the best examples to use this, okay? Because right. they're... As far as policies are concerned, they're so left-wing and like... Uh, progressive that it, it, the world looks to them as the example to this. Right. In these societies who have hit the epitome of quote unquote equality, you have mass differences of what happened. Males, for the most part, have gone towards the engineering side. It's like a massive amount. Right. And then you have females, for the most part, that have gone towards the healthcare side, the actual the nurses side. Right. That portion of it. That's the natural tendency between the between the sexes. Whether we want that, that to be the truth or not, that's what happened in these situations. Right. And the pay gap in these situations is what's being covered specifically I'm sorry, but it's being covered specifically to the corporate set. <laughs> and nice. that's my issue with this. No, that's my biggest issue because you yeah. know what? I agree that many women should be the same. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. In yeah. all levels of society. Whether it be religious, whether it be... I don't care what it is. Dick's we should feminist. be equal. We really should be. However, there's nothing wrong with us being different at, as well. Just like you said, men on, as a whole, we're just built stronger physically. That doesn't make us better at all. It makes us better at It just at makes fighting. us different. We're just different at, yeah. at things. Just like women are better at certain things than we are, we're yeah. better at certain things than women are. To say that nowadays apparently is wrong. Right. But th- that's the truth of the matter. Yeah, men and women have different skill sets. They're good and at different stuff. It's those differences that make us awesome. 
I it's know, those we're so much that better than you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, it, see, and, and that's where I think, like, I have the issue with feminism, modern-day feminism. Right, because the original feminists were just like, hey, we want to be able to vote, too. Yeah. And eventually, they're like, yeah, I And they wanted, so. to be, they wanted to get work. They wanted to work. They wanted right. to get paid. They wanted to be an equal contributor to society. They wanted to be treated equally. Not a problem with that. My issue is when you start adding this extra bullshit that isn't true. Right. That's where I start having the issue where... And I call it bullshit because when you actually look at the numbers and the statistics behind it, the real <laughs> thing, it, does, it doesn't, it's, it's selected. And that's my problem. Oh, because I want the equality. Here rolling my eyes. I know. Yeah. No, but I, and, and I mean this with love because I really want the equality. I genuinely do. Like in the military, unfortunately, I'll say this much. There's not, equality exists in the sense of we're all treated like shit. Especially in the Marine Corps. Every single person, doesn't matter what your race is, what your religion is, what your gender is, you're going to be treated like shit from the moment you walk in. Right. You have to earn your fucking respect. Right. Because you're not a human being when you first walked in. Empty the jar, fill yeah. it up. And they're going to break you down, and your feelings mean nothing, your views mean nothing. Nothing that you believe that you know means shit, because you're not worth it. You have to earn every aspect of that. And that's what I think we've gotten away from in society. Right. Where people want to play these make-believe games, and because... Now, I make a living off make believe games. Right, but <laughs> at what point does your freedom infringe on mine? At what, right. Why should I give a shit about someone else's feelings that doesn't pay my bills? Right. Why should I give a shit about someone else's feeling that isn't going to feed me? That I don't know. Yeah, but that's not the issue. The issue is that there are specific opportunities that are given to men because of your gender that are not given to women. You can, oh, you can say... Ugh. That is a fact. I'm I sorry. You're look right. at Look at, the, look right. at people in power. Is it predominantly women? No. No. Why do you but, think that is? Right. I don't know. Why do you think that is? That's what I want to get to you. We can finish, we'll finish your thought, though. No, you're, you're, yeah, you're, I want to, you're I want to hear your right. perspective. You're, you're absolutely right. There, that is 100% true. However, that's also like you're losing that based on using that based on a Western perception. You're using that based on like on our Western culture perception. I like looking at the big picture of things. Because if you look at the big picture of things, especially in Europe, Women have risen to power in Europe in such a way in the last 40 years that it's, it's flabbergasting and it's amazing to see this. The problem that we're having on this side is that we're not catching up to certain, uh, to certain views, but we're demanding these most absurd things that the rest of the world just can't get behind. Yet I've seen you do literally nothing for us, sir. Okay, you sit over here and you spout this. You literally hijacked my question. Again, proving the point <laughs> where women, we don't want to be talked about. We want to talk for ourselves and not talked about. Okay? In this country alone this year, who? Men? In the Supreme Court with one fucking chick that was on the fucking bandwagon put in the office by Trump to vote away women's rights. R repealed back women's rights 60 fucking years, dude. You're, you're talking about Roe versus yes. Wade, right? right? Hello, hello. But, Why do you think that is? It's to keep women beneath men. You, it has nothing else to do with the fact whether you are pro-choice or pro-life. It is to keep women what? Submissive and subservient to men. Why do you think that the middle of the country, all those white women voted for fucking Trump? It's because they're under the guise that men are the head of the household and they know what's best for them. Which is a your personal own belief, like whatever the fuck you want. But here's the thing. The government... Right? If the government told you, hey, sir, you can't come, you can't masturbate unless it's for procreation. Oh, the government would tell me that. If the government <laughs> did, right, you men would be in an opera. You'd be in absolute opera. Like you could, the government has no qualms that can't put their laws on my body. Yet for women, so, I'm sorry. So okay. you're telling me I have to have that baby. So my question then is this: You said that you don't want men to tell women what to do, but the original Roe versus Wade verdict was given by men. All was ruled by men. So to have your cake and eat it too is kind of odd. What are you talking about? You said that this Supreme Court, that there was all men and one woman that took away your rights, right? 
the people that voted yes. against Roe v. Wade the were original, all men with the exception yes. of Amy Cunty Barrett. But the original verdict in 1971 was Yes, was all, all men. men. And again, who put the men on there? Do you not see that the problem is men? Men should not be making decisions about women's health. You know nothing what it is to walk a day in my heels, sir, I'm, 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 or a I'm fucking not, day in my bra. Yeah, I'm not so please, that. I know, but yeah. you are though by by having this conversation and not actually sticking up for women and women's rights. That, you're basically saying, "Well, it's not my I'm, issue because I'm a dude." I wasn't talking about women. I wasn't talking about abortion. We're, we're, rights. we're talking, about talking about the pay gap. Pay gap. I know, okay. I know, yeah, but I'm is, getting on this because, no, because here's the thing: you literally. A, okay, that's no, fine. No, no, no. I'm gonna let you finish. You later, I reserve my time. Well, <laughs> see, this is what happens when you try to have these type of conversations. Oh, I'm fired up now no, because seriously. No, no, no. What happens in these type of conversations is you work or you, you never answered the question. You, I, I tried to answer the actual response where it's like, look, the wage gap, that's what we were on. Yes. On the wage gap itself, you avoided the actual, the actual answer of me saying, look, this applies strictly to corporate jobs. To white collar jobs. your opinion and no, your no, no. research. Through actually, this is actual data that I can show. Like this is. But she said she said as a nurse, there were nurses with the same experience as her. There were males that made more money just because they were males. That's the argument, right? Because men are at a higher wage, given across the board. It doesn't matter necessarily what your job. In the military, Title that's is. 100% not true. In the military, well, women get again, better Again, I can't speak on the military. I haven't been in there. But you said across the board. I, I'm talking about nursing specifically, oh. which was what the question was. Okay. And um, again, you know, like... And it's, it would be weird if there's mostly women in nursing, but men got paid more. Would it be a supply-demand thing? Like how... I mean, men are diversity higher. Yeah. They're diversity higher when it comes to nursing because the field is dominated yeah. by women. But, I mean, look at most of the doctors are male. Right. So, again, you're at a higher level of pay. So, But that's a doctor and that's a nurse. I mean, a woman, I a woman can be a doctor too, right? There's lots of women yeah, doctors. Yeah, 100%. 100%. They do, they've got to do all the same stuff the men do to become a doctor. Right, yes. you gotta pass all the tests. And yes, just like everything is across the board for nursing, everybody has to pass the NCLEX mm -hmm. in order to. And then, if you get into a special specialty, you have to take more testing. Yeah, and then continuing educational credits. Right, per year, mm -hmm. everyone has to pass the same class to get the degree. Yes, I, but I do know I started with the same person on the same unit on the same floor, and didn't you know he got paid more than me? Eventually, uh, no. eventually, or initially? No, initially, right initially. out the gate. We're both hired on the same floor at the same time. I wonder. I wonder why you say it's just because he was a man. He just got. What more else money. could it be? I don't know. I don't, I don't know the situation. Same education level, same everything. Yeah. I don't know. Again. I only speak on what I know. Right. Do I know your statistics that you're talking about? No, I don't know that research. But I do know that there is a wage gap. I mean, significantly. But that, again, the reason that women are not in bigger positions of power is because we get paid less, right? We can't afford as much. And we're taxed on things that we need, like tampons and sanitary products that, right. again, yeah. bodily function, that's I can't control it, that's fucked up. But Viagra is covered under health insurance? It is? Yes. Because ED is a real disease? Exactly. See, that I mean, always that poor, See, that poor confuses me shriveled too. penis. Oh, see, e that confuses e me too. Yeah. That really does, because you guys shouldn't be taxed on that stuff. And I, I uh, pink tax. Agree. It's I a pink. I 100% agree. And they call it the pink tax. Seems like an extra sort of like, I, yeah, it's a, a little extra pee in the butt, so to speak. So <laughs> statistically, because I did the research about period poverty, is that on the course of a woman's menstrual cycle, women will spend anywhere from eighteen to sixty-two thousand dollars in taxes on their menstrual cycle. Wow! Whether it's Damn. tampons, pads, new underwear, whatever. Damn. Douche cream. <laughs> Douche cream. <laughs> yeah. So your badge doesn't smell like a fish. Yeah. <laughs> you know? uh. Yeah, it's sad. We should yes. give that away for free, the douche cream. That's just my... It seems like they should give that away... in particular. They should give away soap, probably, <laughs> too. You know what I mean? Like, well, it, yeah, but I guess my biggest issue when it comes to this whole argument, uh, and we're never going to see eye to eye on this. Never. No matter what it is. Like, 
it never will. We're still friends, guys. No, we are. And that's the thing. We're really good friends, honestly. Well, we're that's really the beauty of it, too, especially with comedy, because it's like, I don't know, you, man. This is what's in my head, what's in your head. Like, well, it doesn't mean... My, what The difference is, what's in my head does not have to be yeah. in your head. And you I'm know? not saying it's gospel truth, what I am. Well, it might be. So I'm like, this is what I've done. This is the research I've seen. Like, in the military, for me, we had very different... I had a very different experience. If you were a woman, you got promoted faster than any male. In the military. In the military. So that means yeah. you got paid more. Diversity higher. No. What it was is, especially like, in the Marine Corps, because think about it, in the Marine Corps, we're the most savage of all the branches. Okay. 90% male, 10% female. There's yeah. a reason, because we don't lower the standards, the physical standards. You have to meet the phys- these certain standards, whether you're male, female, transgender, whatever it is, you have to meet them. If you can't meet them, you can't be a Marine. We're the right. most selective of all the branches. You've got to do a certain amount of push-ups. you got to be able Pull to do ups, A, B, and C, uh, pass certain well, tests. Certain things. You have to be certain physical fit to even us to even right. talk to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. This is you know? So because we have a standard that we need to meet. Right. So when you get these alpha females in the military, because that's what they are. Right. Every Marine that I've met that was a female, for the most part, was an alpha. For the most part. Like, it's crazy how they are. And But because there are women in... And they're a Marine in particular, like, that's a rare, that's rare. Remember, yeah. 90 to 10, 90 to 10 percent. So they would get the promotions faster. They would, it, it, were they treated better? No, definitely not. Right. But did they get the promotions faster? Oh, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. They, I had, I knew one Marine, female. She hit the rank of E6 in six years. I don't know what that means. E6 but. is a staff sergeant. Typically takes 12 years to hit. Oh, Wow. So she cut it in half. Hmm. Not the first case that I've heard of. Maybe she peed in a butt. She peed in a yeah. lot of it. <laughs> you could say that. And I'm not saying that it's right or wrong. The top. And I, and again, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. But what I'm Get saying it, though is sis. that across the board. Get it. Like across the board, like it's there's differences. There's differences that and to take to focus in on one thing and make it as gospel truth, that's my problem. You have to look at everything and be like, okay, is there really an issue here or is it just an issue here that we're just trying to make bigger? Regarding just the pay gap, the the best argument against that, and this is just the one that I've heard, was that if you don't have to pay women less, but they can do the same job just as well, then why don't you just hire all women? Because companies will go under if they don't increase their bottom line especially when there's more women to men but the problem is not right, that the seven to one right? yeah and that that's not the problem the problem is women don't want to do the jobs those the jobs that keep america going like being a sanitation worker right you right guys don't want to do that not a lot of or go, or, you or kind or, of do that or, I mean, or like, on an oil rig <laughs> or like on an oil rig or building a skyscraper like in construction right, right, right. there's a reason why the majority of construction jobs are male because it's physically demanding yeah it's really hard to do. well it's, it's also really hard to get into those things because they're unionized and you've got to know somebody that's not true you could walk in dude i'm i know people guys with no papers mexican women with no papers that can go in there and they get jobs like it's not about knowing people. It's just about really, really putting the wall, the hard work. Does it help knowing people? Fuck yeah, it does. Just like in comedy, just like in entertainment, just like in construction, just like in the military. The more people you know, the better off you could be, especially if they like you. Right. You know, being likable is great, but that doesn't mean shit when it comes to like what's being talked about here. What's being talked about here is you know like you have these other jobs that people don't want to do, and there's no wage problems there, but they don't want to do those jobs because they're hard. Hmm. They want to you know, but those are the jobs that keep us going. Being an electrician. Working for Edison, you know, shit like that. Those were the real jobs. Those are those are the jobs that keep that allow this nation to continue to thrive. And without well, those jobs, with more women being born, those jobs will have to be given to women. That's, That's a good real. point. Yeah, um, and good point. Re- I really want that to happen. I'm here for it. I really want that. To, I want there to be a, a, a switch where women go and they take over these tough jobs and they you know why because that would help society that would make us better and that's yeah, what I'm but about we have to better. we have to be given the opportunity to do that though and we're not and we're not on the same playing field as you just said about the marines and how you said about fighting right anatomically biologically we're not on the same playing field first and foremost and then second of all 
We have to be given the opportunity. We have to be given the opportunity to be president of the United States to shake things up, right? We have to be able to be in positions of power to say, hey, you need more women in these fields. What the fuck? Let's go. Like, pull uh, out the we call. Are, we are like one staircase away from having a woman president right now. <laughs> I've, I've, I've said it time and time again. That, that is the way how Kamala will be president. Biden will be found unfit. He's going to sneeze too hard. She's going to be, he'll be the first technical. <laughs> Remember uh, when he president. fell up the stairs going to Air Force One? I was like, yeah. ladies, we almost had it. Do you remember <laughs> when he was shaking air? When he was trying to, when he was, he got off, and he's just going like this to the air? No, I'm I like, stopped what watching him. What is this guy doing? It, it is, we're in, we're in a very weird like time. like a Again, yeah. proving another point. We'd rather have a geriatric in presidency making decisions for us all than to have a ball busting woman that wears a pantsuit. Right? Well, I, I, I just want one that's competent. That's my only thing. And Kamala is not competent. Let's be honest. She's not. She's not competent. I don't know her, so. She's not, so. Yeah, we, we're politically, we don't need to jump down this rabbit hole because this is kind of my <laughs> wheelhouse and I don't want to get too weird with you guys. Oh, no worries. But, but uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I just want somebody smart and that's alive well, as president. You know what I mean? By, you know what I mean? Have a pulse. That's all I want. Have a pulse. <laughs> He's got a battery pack that needs to right? be changed. He's like yeah. an iPhone. He's like a Tesla you got to plug in, you know? Every, yeah. after, after 45 minutes, he's just no longer good at talking. Who's you know? pulling like, the strings, though? That's what I really want to know. That's a very good question. <laughs> that's, a, yeah. that's not a... Yeah. Again, a again, that's the rabbit hole. We can dance around that one. But, we but can... comedy, going back to comedy, though. Let's get back to comedy real quick. Well, look, I want to let Mistress Kay do her, the, oh. do her response to your... Uh, your chauvinist is anti oh, yeah, woman anti- rant. Apparently I'm anti woman. Your sexist anti trans transphobic. I didn't say you're an anti woman. Masculinity. Trans- Hold on, I'm still going. Oh, Italian- he is no, transphobic. Okay. Oh, I'm transphobic. He is. Yeah. I'm, tra- I'm transphobic. And that's one of the things that we fight about all the time. Tell me okay. about <laughs> that. Let's I'm go. I didn't know that. You, you what is, what is transphobic? What is transphobic? Because it's like, no, it's like oh, if you have a different view on something, you're some, you're scared of it. You're phobic of no, that. No, because no, here's the thing. Like, here's the thing. Me and Dick, we have a lot of similarities, and we have a lot of differences, right? Yeah. And no matter how much, again, I think I'm meant to be this man's friend because I do give him a different perspective, and I push his buttons. Yeah. And and the same thing, vice versa, right? Like, he, he gives it to me straight. He's like, fuck you with all that feminist shit, you know? And then... He's like, I like women too, and women should have the same. I'm bitch, you're a feminist, god damn it. Right. Like, you are exactly what I'm telling you. Maybe you're just not rah rah with pom poms like I am, but you really are. But um, me and him, we, we fundamentally disagree on a lot of fucking things. Yeah. And it won't, it won't change no matter how many conversations that we have. But at the end of the day, we've kind of come to the conclusion that we can just agree to disagree and still be friends. <laughs> It's, you know, it's one of those things where I, I hope people can look at me and Mistress K and be like, you know what, you can be, have the most differences of opinions, whether it be politically, it could be sports, which we don't disagree sports on football teams, by the way. No. Go Patriots. Go Patriots. Uh, yeah. Okay. yeah uh, but, you know, it could be. Hold on, let's not talk about the Browns. Uh, we've, we've, we've that game was terrible. I almost did a, there's, a, there's a comic in town. He really likes the NFL. He's a Browns fan. Browns fan. Uh, and they played the Ravens, I guess, on Sunday. And we were going to do uh, Will Hunsinger. We're going to do this podcast soon. But he, oh. has, he has like a... Do you know Will? I'm on the show with him tonight. Oh, strange. Have you, uh, have you, yeah, at Rick's. Have, have you met him? No, I haven't met him. I'm Will's great. Him. I'm He's really funny. Him tonight, so, yeah. uh, he had... Uh, he has a ritual that he does for football where he does a touchdown, he drinks big pounds of beer. He, does a, he you know, drinks how many pounds of beer? Well, he, if there's a touchdown, he'll pound a beer. Oh, no, I he drinks a pound of beer. A so pound he's of clearly beer. been sober well, for a long time. time. I'm not dead. Wouldn't that be just like one beer, though? How much is a, I don't know. How much what is is a, a pound of beer? Because it's a bit smaller than this. I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah, but per Anyone touchdown? The bears aren't getting a lot of touchdowns. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. He's leaving sober. Yeah, and then he's got other things. Well, this uh, I guess he's got other um, other things. He, yeah, he'll be the first down to a shot or something like that. Anyway, the point is I don't follow football, but I was like, we're gonna watch. We'll have a, an NFL football cool. podcast, Tell and I'm gonna try and keep up with you. Oh, you're gonna be fucked up. And, yeah, and I'm also gonna root for whatever team he's not. He's not, so that I can because well, I am. I will talk more shit as I drink, as is the way. Yeah. And uh, who does it? I thought that'd be a fun one. He, we weren't able to do it. This past week, but hopefully this weekend we'll be able to knock that one out. But hey, Will Hunsinger, you'll be you'll be at Rolling Smoke Barbecue. Mm-hmm. Both you are you doing it as well? 
Hopefully. Hopefully. We Fingers crossed. It's Wednesday, right? Yeah, we're so, trying yeah. to get our guest spot in there, so mm-hmm. Steve, okay. get our guest spot. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah I hope but, so. No, that, that's a fun. That's a fun room too dude, because it's room, small, but it's it's every, people are into it. You so know? good. So I heard good. that people take their body parts out of their pants. <laughs> the last time that, I was there, that, who told you that? <laughs> the last time I was there, there was a dude. It was a it was a Fremont comic. I'm not going to say his name. Uh, his bits. Let's just, literally he, his bits literally all over his, the place. He started the show. He started the show. Saying, oh, dude, it was a it was that um caveman guy. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm talking dude, about. Rock, okay. rock and roll. What's his he name? Wears hard, a thong. Hard rock. When yeah. he starts off, right, and then he threatened the crowd. That saying, guy's whole act is just him trying to fuck dudes. Like all he yes! did, his whole thing is like just yes! just just so you know, bro. I'm bisexual. I'll have bro. sex with whatever. And he check t- out my body. Check out my pouch. Dude, and let's he, roll. He started off threatening the crowd that if they don't laugh because he's a Fremont comic he's typically doing he does uh, comedy in his thong yeah, he's gonna whip his junk out yeah not even kidding you a guy is a, it Hard Rock Nick I don't I'm not gonna say his name I, I don't, think I don't, that's I, a, I don't wanna get it wrong he, he's got a business card I don't wanna get it wrong <laughs> is it in I'm the pouch I'm not gonna say it's like <laughs> probably like this the only place to keep it <laughs> I don't assume all I know is he had like I think like half a little more than halfway through his set he whipped out his junk dog and finish, and they let him keep going, and he finished the rest of the set with his junk out. Yeah, it's and Vegas, I was just though. like, dude, I love Vegas, bro. I was like, I fucking love yeah. Vegas. Yeah, I mean, you were dude. talking about a Fuck, chick fucking yes. a squid the other couple. Oh, you, you guys, earlier. you guys missed out. You I was guys, supposed to be at that show. You, I was you, supposed to be at that show. Do not miss that next year. I was, you I was really go supposed see. to be at that show, and then uh, last minute they follow they told me about follow it. Penny Poison and Gothens on Instagram. Uh, oh Gothens is God. one of the guys I started this podcast with a while ago. Uh, Penny is his wife. And she is an entertainer that specializes. She's got pointy ears like an elf. She's got forked tongue. Oh, and uh, she does stuff with fire, sword, swallowing, a lot of freak show stuff. And uh, Apparently she, squids. And squids are her specialty. That's what she's really known squids. for. And we have this squid show. It's a. Is it still technically called sushi? Uh, is it the Squid Games? Is, yeah. that where, is, is she the originator of it? Is that where it's at? Though? All I know is that the whole backstop smelled like bait after they were showing it <laughs> over. It was... Oh, it that's was, fucking gross. It smelled like a fucking Vietnamese fish shop. She oh. must know a guy, too, because squids might easily get hold of like Oh, no, that. you can just go to the seafood market down by Walmart. There it's, you go, <laughs> bam. God, running a joke. You can get out of buckets. She knows that she had to go on Amazon. David's like, actually, no, you're going to run this. Like, no, this is, is Vegas. Like, you don't know, think I have a squid guy? We got a squid guy. We got a squid guy. I get you a squid. Guy. You want a squid? Okay. Well set. So, feminism. <laughs> yeah, I'm for it. Uh, like, what I was gonna say though, I want people to understand that, like, seriously, you can be friends with anybody. Mm-hmm. You don't have to agree with on everything. You don't. Except for Trumpers, no. <laughs> <laughs> no you, look, you could be. I'm friends with Trumpers. I'm friends yeah. with uh, fucking the left, the right, middle, whatever. I have friends on all sides. I'm. I, I don't give a shit. People, people, people are people. Yeah, like people in, in people. traveling the world. I found that people have way more in common than they don't, and yeah. everything else is just sort of distraction. I think yeah. a lot of the, the Agreed. divide, the dividing, the really divisive stuff, a lot of that exists in, just on the internet. Yeah. It's like media that's pumped into our heads. Because when you get when you get face to face with people, people are pretty cool generally, yeah. unless they have identified themselves by something that they read online, which is not really identifying yourself. That's just sort of like taking a persona. It's it's regurgitation, and a lot of people just regurgitate yeah. nowadays. What's well, boring, you know what yeah. I mean? That's it's just like, come on, like what? Who are you really? Mm-hmm. You know, are you just you have you're, you're a collection of memes? Or, there's a person down there, like that I person. Hope. I can guarantee them you they're more interesting than whatever I've read on Facebook. You know, that's a, that, that's what I want people to do is talk more. Get off Facebook, get off the internet, go to comedy shows, go to live entertainment, talk to people. Like, get to know each other, hang out, fucking do real shit, you know what I mean? Because it seems to me the more time we spend looking at our phones, the more time we spend fucking looking at screens, the less time, like, we're just going crazier. We're being inundated with crazy shit. We're losing the people skills. Yeah. And now we're fighting over dumb fucking shit. We can't agree on basic things. This is ridiculous. Like the wage gap. <laughs> exactly. Or like, or, <laughs> exactly. Or you know, gas shouldn't be, dude. Gas shouldn't be as expensive as it is. You know what I'm saying? I think we all can agree on that shit. Gas should not be fucking seven dollars a gallon. It's well, ridiculous. we live in LA. They don't pay that oh, much. Five dollars a gallon. Gas shouldn't be five dollars a gallon. It's still too much, dude. Gas and no, coke should great. never be the same price. You know what I mean? Like that's insane. That's right. insane, dude. Do I buy my squid or a gallon of gas? 
It's like, should I start? It's like, <laughs> you gotta make choices. You gotta make a decision. Uh, should I start tough. a line and run there? Or is it cheaper to just not buying the new dildo today, but I'll buy a cucumber. <laughs> Do I need to pee in somebody's butt to get the money? Or, yeah. Mistress, can you tell me about yes. your experiences in feminism and why you're such a so adamant? I cannot help but think that your job has something to do with your perspective. Well, it's, yes, but I also, again, I'm a woman living in a man's world where predominantly I'm, I'm in a field that's dominated by men, right? You don't see that many female comics. We uh, don't see a lot of female dominatrixes either. <laughs> I mean, yes, you, you don't see a lot of male dominatrix. Yes, yeah. you see what, a lot of male I mean. doms. The, the, fe- the female dominatrix, there's plenty of them. I'm saying that there's a lot more female dominatrix than male. I messed that up. But there's not a lot of male dominatrix. Um, like nursing. I disagree. There's actually a lot of doms out there. I think men oh, aren't just... Yeah, like 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 Mr. Gray or whatever. There's a lot of shit. Oh, God. You, you just... Think. Oh, you, you hit a taboo. Oh. Um, well, that was like when the movie Only the Strong came out and there was these high school kids having MMA matches. Like, you know, yeah, the, the it's thing, like, like for me, I was like, get the fuck out of here. I know this is a pretty entertaining movie, but yeah. entertaining like how Bloodsport was entertaining. By the way, far superior movie than mm-hmm. Only the Strong. But it's also like, look at you guys trying to cash in on the real shit that I do. You right, know what right, I mean? Right, right, right. The thing is, is though, is that women are fetishized you, by just more? the way that we yeah, look. Yeah, gotcha. And what, how talk and all that stuff. And men, not so much, thank you. Not so much. You want to I'm good, thank you. Mm. So uh, there's that, you know. No, I feel you. Yeah. I get it. Mm. I get it. That's but there's a lot of male doms that are out there, uh, that are out there doing some of the similar things that I'm doing, only to to females or to other males. Um, I have a lot of female clients in my line of work. You know, uh, it's really? just. The women Tell are kind of basic. You I'm, know? I'm interested in that because what the the psychology between men and men and women are fundamentally different, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. as any man or woman should be aware. And but in dominatrix is a universe like comedy, like what makes you laugh. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. So what is the psychology difference between clients who are female versus male? That's interesting to me. Well. Um, Again, I don't really know because everybody's journey is different, but I particularly don't really like to beat on other women. I think women traditionally, we, we've, we've beat up each other enough. A lot of women like to get slapped, spit on, and One hundred percent, but uh, I don't like to, I don't want to put another woman down. I just I'm trying to day, empower women. There was one day that I was, I was hooking up with a girl, and not like a specific date or anything, but there was just like a point where choking and slap I was like oh we're doing this now is this a thing I didn't it wasn't a thing for a while and now all of a sudden it's I'm people more common it's more open I'm people more open with it it's more common etc yeah. but well there's a very thin line between pain and pleasure darling very so uh, again it's and women blue I mean I know you guys are gonna bite my head off when I say this but women we have a higher tolerance for pain yeah. we do because we bleed every month you we do. push out fucking watermelons out of our snatches so we're all fucking here you know what i mean like we have a higher tolerance of pain like women uh, as a nurse let me tell you when i'd ask women the pain scale i was like on a scale of one to ten ten being like mild and ten being like the worst excruciating pain of your life like these women would be bleeding like a limb falling off and they'd be like it's about a six or seven like because we're just tough we're we're built that way you know women are (laughs) Uh, needless to say, not only society's punching bag, but <laughs> biologically we're punching bags. It's almost like you're made to be a punching bag. It's like society, you're kind of making an argument for society right there, honestly. Well, I mean, look at, I mean, if you believe in the Bible, look at, we were cut from a rib. We were an afterthought. We yeah, were give a side it back. piece. I want equality. You know, we were a side piece, and again, we were blamed for eating the apple. God forbid. You know, you get the munchies, but we were blamed for that. You know, like we literally have... Um, just been blamed for a lot traditionally uh, in society as women and uh, have been told and cultured that we should be taken care of and you shouldn't have any kind of sexual fantasies and God you should never be spoken you know loudly you should never have your own opinion about things and as a woman in comedy that's one of the things that I love about being on stage is that I get to give my perspective and it is not a conversation it is a lecture really yeah. it's you know yeah. like the the only conversational piece about comedy is that 
I'm getting a response from the audience. It's, right. do you like this? Do you think this is funny? Or do you agree with me? That's why you're laughing. It's not like, what do you think about that, folks? And then you wait for an answer. No, that's a conversation. It's not. This is my perspective. This is how I feel. This is my life. This is what I've been through. And fuck you. You've got to take it for the six minutes I'm up here. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And uh, I think a lot of female comics, you know, not.